So hi everyone, this is Jessica here from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a 100% achievement trophy guide for We Were Here Forever. Big thank you to the folks over at Total Mohem Games for allowing us early access to this one. We've been playing it on the Xbox console and it drops on the 31st of January 2023. Now naturally as we go through this I will warn you there is a full spoiler warning in effect because we show you the game from start to finish. I will strongly recommend that you pick this game up, it is by far the best in the series and if you've played the other series you'll be familiar with the concept. Also if you've been following us for a little while on the channel now you'll know that we have a We Were Here Together video and we're going to follow the same approach as we did with that previous video. Now beware, this game is actually a lot longer compared to the previous versions of the game, so your first playthrough will take you probably anywhere between four and a half to five hours to complete. And then you will need to go back to these specific chapters using the chapter select function to go back and get the achievements that the alternating player would get. So, so we're going to kick this off uh, and the first achievement that we will need to go after is inviting a person to the party. Uh, at this time as you can see I'm having a bit of a nightmare trying to do it but what you need to do is you need to add the person's friend ID and then you'll be able to invite them in to play the game with you. There's a grand total of 39 achievements and trophies that you'll need to grab along the way and it's worth noting that these are all story related just dependent on the arc that you choose to take. So once you've been able to invite a friend to the party uh, and party up with you ready for this uh, you'll be able to type in their friend ID from the main menu. I wasn't able to exp uh, invite through Xbox Live, I'm not sure, but potentially this is linked to the fact that the game is pre-release. So type into the, the pad here the details of the player that you want to. Uh, what so far it has been is their gamer tag followed by a series of numbers. Once you've done that you'll bag yourself an achievement for inviting a person to the game. Player 2 will also need to do this at some point, but they can do it later on, it doesn't necessarily have to be done straight away. So the way we're going to divide this video up as well, it's going to be kind of a follow on step by step piece. So what you'll see is you'll see player 1 will do one part, player 2 will do the next part, uh, and vice versa. So And we'll keep repeating that until we get to the very end of the game. As you can see I popped my achievement for inviting a friend to the game, and we're going to kick start, start this one up. So you can use the swap function by the way at the bottom as well to swap your roles over. So this means the host would be in the player 2 position, but it doesn't make any difference at this stage. Um, there is no specific achievements for being player 2, there, it's more how about the route that you go through the game. So there are points in the game where you get separated, and when you get separated in different routes you'll get different achievements. So let's get the show on the road, uh, and I will regroup with you after the cutscene. Spoken away home for those long dead, dead. <laughs> escape or oh, face defeat. Let's see which fate our guest shall meet. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. This is chapter one, which is actually long as the We Were Here Together game. It took us over an hour and a half to kind of get clear of this one. It's the longest chapter in the game, but once you're outside, all of the other chapters take you roughly about 30 minutes to complete. Consider this one introductory. So you're going to start this off, and it's going to give you some on screen prompts on how to things, use things like your walkie talkie and that kind of thing. So just follow those prompts for now, and that's going to set you up to kind of get moving forward. Uh, and we are as player one and we have just woken up in our cell. So we want to exit out. We want to make our way down the stairs and straight across to the opposite side. As we come up, we're going to pop this gate open here. Just press A or X if you're on PlayStation. When you make it into this room, you want to look through the grate on the right hand side. 
and this is the first clue to our first puzzle of the game. Take note of those shapes because you're going to need to tell player 2 what they are in a moment. So switching over to player 2, they're also now just coming out of their cell. They'll want to make their way down. The gate's already open in this case, but you can just go straight on through. You'll also see on your right hand side a set of wheels. Now these wheels correlate to the image in player 1's room, so you just need to match the three shapes that the player 1 sees, so you need to communicate that backwards and forwards with each other, and make sure the three shapes are set into the door. Once done correctly, it will open up. Player 2 then needs to continue forward, so as they make their way forward they're going to be taught the jump feature, so you'll need to make your way up to the ledge and hop on over to the other side. Player 2 then needs to open up the gate that is directly in front of them. Continuing into this area, they want to look to the right and they're going to head down the stairs. And as you get to the bottom of the stairs, you want to go through this tiny little gap. You want to crouch by clicking the left stick. Continue through, and as you reach this area just here, you'll want to make your way over to this lever. Okay, so this is a little bit of a timed event. You won't make the first attempt because of the little cutscene, but you need to hold down the Y button to sprint. So make your way back to the lever. Pull the lever and then you'll want to sprint on down to the other end. And as you're going through this section, you're going to see there's another door on your left, but the clue for player one is on your right. So stay here and look at this one. Switching back to player one, this player is now going to go out and up the stairs. And they're going to go and go through the same sequence as what player two did. So following the same path, you'll need to jump over the gap, pop the door open on this side. As you come into this area, you're going to look to your left and there is a tiny little grate, sorry, a hole down here. Not a grate, that's player two's path. Follow that through and you want to pop the door open on the end. Once you've done that, make your way up to the top of the stairs and you're going to see the same lever orientated sprinting puzzle that player two had. So throw that down. I've cut it here so that you don't see me fail. Run to the other end and when you're through on the other side, look at the table on your right and you're going to see that there is a wheel just here. You'll want to pick that wheel up and we're going to place that into the door. And this is where player two needs to guide player one on what shapes is behind the other side of their grate. So following their instructions, make sure you enter all three shapes into the door. Okay, now that that's over, you will want to turn around before going through your door. Player 1 wants to turn around and there's another grate with a, another classy door puzzle on it. So you want to look behind that grate and take note of the shapes for Player 2. So flipping back to Player 2, Player 2 is going to be by this door just here. They'll want to pick up the wheel on the floor, pop that into the door, and then using the guidance of Player 1, enter the shapes into the door until that opens up. Now that that's over and you're in this room, you want to make your way forward. You want to grab the torch that is just on the door here. And we're going to follow the path in. Now we're going to need to find two reels and we also need to provide clues back to player one. So as you're walking around, you want to go up to the left hand side and by the fire just here, you're going to find one of the wheels for the door. There is a second one that also needs to be found. So start making your way up to the grate where the clue is. But take a right and then by the fire just here on the floor, you'll want to pick that up. You can hop over to the other side and you can enter those into the door. And then you can turn around and we're going to jump back because we need to give player one their clue. So just behind the grate, it's the same concept as the last three puzzles. You use the shapes to enter into the door. We're now back as player one and we're going to turn around and go through the door that we opened up earlier. And as you go through this door, you're going to see a torch on the gate ahead of you. Pick that up. It's going to be useful for seeing each other later and finding your way through dark spaces. You'll want to follow the pathway in. Directly in front of you, there is a wheel on the floor. You'll want to pick this one up. Continue up the path on your left. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see a wheel on the rock. You'll want to pick this one up. Make your way up to the gate just on the door here. 
and we're going to then have that communication back with player two they're going to tell you what shapes that they had on their clue and you need to enter those into the door Now that we've done that, we need to backtrack down and we're gonna find the clue that is needed for player two. So make your way down and take a left. And as you come into this area, you're gonna see a grate with the clue behind it. I recommend lighting up the torches in the area as well, just to make it, things a little bit more visible. Now flipping back to player number two, from the clue, we wanna turn around and we're gonna go back to the door that we just put the wheels into. So spin around, jump over the gap, and then we're going to communicate back with player one the three different symbols that need to go into the door. So now that you've done that, you want to walk forward. And we're going to go into this area just here. And there's a door on your left. You need to go through this door. Uh, and we're going to eventually start to see the other player. So make your way forward, crouch under the, uh, the rock just here, and then on the right hand side you're going to see this lever. Just sit tight because we need player one before we can operate this. Back to player one. Player one needs to go back up to the door that they just recently opened. So turn around from where you are, take a right, another right, and go up the staircase, through the door. And then you're going to go up the small staircase. This is the area where you would see player two, normally if you're running this both at the same time. But go through the door, continue down to the very end and you're gonna crouch through the tiny little gap. And then as you come through here, you'll see on your left hand side, player number two. It can teach you the emote function, hold down the X or the square button and you'll be able to point, wave or do rock, paper, scissors with player number two. But now you both need to hold down this leader at exactly the same time. So both give it a quick pull and you'll both pop an achievement or trophy for progressing through this area. It's the same one either side, so don't worry about swapping over and doing this part again later. Exit through the door and make your way up the stairs. And as I said, player two will get the same kind of tunnel uh, achievement at the same time. So they'll follow a similar path to you where they walk up, but eventually they'll just hit a straight up dead end. Player one is gonna be in this slightly more open area. So start off by taking a right and going down. Player two needs to progress until they can't walk any further. Uh, but on my right hand side, there is a key. I'm gonna grab that one and I'm gonna open up the door that is directly in front of me. Make your way through that door. And we wanna take a moment here whilst player two is catching up with us. So just to show you though, player two still gets the same achievement. So they'll pop the achievement away out of here. And like I mentioned, it's very similar. They'll need to go up the stairs and they'll go into a very similar space to you. So this area is actually called the Chasm. So it's a big kind of gorge area. And this is one of the checkpoints you can kind of come back to and play along with later. Um, so what we actually need to do is swap items between the two different players and have the players regroup and then ungroup again. So player two needs to go all the way down. You're going to see this little switch thing directly in front of you. There's a key in it. But player two doesn't need that key. They just need to pull the lever and send that over to player one. There is a mechanism for you to be able to trade items between each other. I also strongly recommend putting up your torch because it allows you to see where each other are. Now flipping back to player one, player one is going to be able to grab the key out of this little basket and then you'll pop that one back in and put the green key in here and player two will be able to pull the same switch to bring the key back over. Now player one is going to want to sit tight by that machine that is just to the right of them uh, and when the key comes back to player two they'll be able to open up the door that is on their left 
hand side. So the key comes over, grab it out of the basket. Okay, so once that door's open, player two will look to the left and they're gonna see a machine they can interact with. So player one can only control a certain set of pins and player two can control the other set of pins. And the aim here is to organize the pins next to their retrospective fixed picture on the machine. So it, you have to talk backwards and forwards between each other to say, okay, now I need you to move this pin. So the player that is capable of moving the joker pin should start off by moving the joker to the far right. Okay, now we need to move the king's crown next to the joker and then we will want to move the queen's crown up into the top left hand corner. So take it all the way up. And then you want to go down and you want to select the potion bottle that is on the bottom row. And we're going to take that and place that next to the queen's crown. And then we're also going to bring over the king's crown. We're going to move left and then up. And then we're going to move the bishop to the right, up and then right one more time, just so it's out of the way of the king's crown. Okay, and then we need to move the king's crown down to the bottom and then over to the left, and that's gonna be in the correct place now. And then we're gonna to need to move the bishop's crown out of the way, and we're gonna to need to move him up to the top. Once that's done, we wanna grab the jester's crown, and we're gonna move that over to the center and then down next to the king. And then from here, if you can't already see it, we'll take the bishop hat down and then over to the far right, and then we need to move the potion next to the potion. So this is gonna kickstart all the power in the area that we need to go forward. So all of the lights are gonna come on and things are gonna be powered up and lifts moving over, which is exactly where we wanna be. We're gonna now switch back over to player number one. And on the right hand side, they wanna use the blue key to open this door up. Once that door is open, take a left. And then as you go up the stairs on the left hand side, we're gonna go after our next puzzle, which is just here. But we need some clues off of player two, first of all. Now player two can find those clues after going through the door, they'll see player one on the other side. Just at the bottom of the stairs there is a picture on the right hand side of this book. Those arrows coordinate to the positions of where we need to point the arrows that player one has on their side on their dials. So we need to point one up to the bottom left hand corner, bottom right and then the other side. So you need to communicate with each other but start off by putting the tiles into the right places. I don't know if this is random or not, but let's rotate the dial. So in this case, top left-hand corner correlates to the top left-hand corner of the picture on player two side, and you wanna keep doing the same. So rotate these pieces into the, the right place, but each square correlates to the other side's picture. Once that's done correctly, you'll then need to open up the gate on the left-hand side, and you're gonna get yourself a key. Take that key out and we want to spin around and you want to use it onto the gate that is just behind us and that's going to allow us to regroup actually with player two. So turn around, open up the lock and that's going to open up the little lift between the two sides. Now before we can do that, player two is going to need to do some hunting. They're going to grab these film reels. There's one to the right of the book that you looked at and then you want to go up the stairs on your left hand side. On the bed is film reel number two. We're going to need these for later. Make your way back down the stairs and then opposite where the book was, you're going to find a lift. Step on in and you want to hit the button that is on your side. That is going to send you over to player number one. Now from here, Directly behind player number one is a bookcase. So both of you need to make your way over, one on each side, side doesn't matter, and you wanna push this over. So once you push that over, inside you're gonna find our next key and another film reel. So player two in this case needs to grab the film reel and player one can grab the key. So grab the film reel, there's five of these in total that we've got to get and then player two is going to grab the key that is on the desk. Look how awkwardly he holds the key. And then from here, both players are going to need to cross back over to the opposite side of the chasm. So turn around, make your way out and both of you will be able to get on the lift at the same time. Not sure how, but there's no collision between the two players. One of you needs to press the button and take yourselves across to the other side. 
And once you've made it to the other side, player two will take a quick right. And then on their right hand side, you're going to see this randomized machine. So across the bottom, you're going to see a set of pictures. These pictures correspond to player one's half of the puzzle. Uh, and when player one gets one of these pictures along the bottom, player two needs to tell them what is the picture that has spun through on the reel. So if I get, for example, the clamshell, then I need to tell them what is the picture on the right hand reel. In this case, something that looks like a coconut. Player one from the lift needs to go up the stairs, just only one half of the flight. Go underneath this piece of wood and then open up the gate that is directly in front of you. And this is going to open up another lift trolley thing. Stand on it and you want to click the button and ride it down to the middle. Now that you're at the bottom, you want to take a left after this little steering wheel thing. We'll come back to this later. Use the left hand set of stairs and you want to go up. And as you make it up to the top of the stairs and look on your right, you're going to see the other half of this. So in this situation, as you can see, we're on a timer and we're going to get this right five times. The picture that is cycling in the top corner is the one that player one needs to describe to player two. Player two will tell them what is above the picture on the spinning reels on the other side. And then player one must press the button that player two tells them to press. So flip back to earlier. So all of this is random. There's no guarantee that you're going to have the same answer as us. So when that picture comes in, I'm going to tell player two that I have the coffee bean looking thing. They're going to look along the bottom of their little spinning reel. Uh, and they're going to find that coffee bean and they're going to tell me the picture above that. So as we say here, so as it rotates one more time. So in this case, I have the curly shell. So I tell that to player two and they'll tell me what is directly above the curly shell. So completely random, nothing you can do it. And we've got to get it right five times in a row. And so in this case, Brennan tells me that it is a curly shell. So I push that onto here and you'll see the little thing on the side pop up. So once that's correct and the time has run out, it will pop up on the left hand side. Next up, we've got a clamshell. So he's going to tell me what is directly above the clamshell. I will push that button. You'll wait for the timer to go. And if you're correct, it's going to pop up or down the particular piece. So here, what looks like a bomb. He tells me it looks like a long seashell. And keep repeating this until all five are up. Now once you've been successful, that's going to pop this gate open directly in front of you and you're going to find a few things. So you're going to find the film reel, you're going to find a key, and you're going to find a big cog. So you want to grab that big cog and all of the stuff that's in here. You're going to want to make your way down to the very bottom of the stairs. Now go right at the bottom and just after the little bridge bit and make your way underneath and you're going to see a place where you can put the cog uh, as part of the main contraption. There's two cogs that we've got to find. Now backtrack back up to the random button machine and just to the left of that you're going to see a door. If you open that up, that is exactly where player two is. So that's going to pop this gate open uh, and they'll be able to come in and join us. So from this spot, player one now needs to continue forward. So they're going to go down the stairs and player two will join them down here eventually. So head on down. Straight across from you, you're going to see a door where you can put the key into, so open up this room. And you're going to be need to be ready for a timed bit of puzzling in this section. So as you come in, you can see a place to put the film reels. Film reel number one is already in, populated with number three, uh, but we have the reels with the other player. So player two is going to make their way out to the right and then down the stairs and across to the other side to regroup with player one. 
And now because player 2 has the majority of the reels, they'll need to pick this up and they need to put the right reel into the corresponding place where the right number is. And you can also push these buttons on the side just here, uh, but you might need to light this projector up for it to rotate. But when you push these buttons, you can spin it around and you'll be able to enter the other numbers that you've got. Now we need to remember here, player one has reel number four that they're gonna need to also put into the machine. So, and this film projector is going to give us the clues for everything that we're looking for to solve the puzzle in this room. This is a timed puzzle, so you're gonna need to be quick and you're gonna have to work together very efficiently. Now, you can rotate this back to the position one, two, three, or four, but the reel corresponds to the order that you must do these particular actions in. So just to walk you through that before you start, so there'll be a section where you need to turn on a key that is directly on beside the boiler behind you. There is a part where you will need to enable the electricity and you need to split up and do this for this to work, otherwise it's not gonna happen. But you need to press the correct sequence of buttons that you see in the film reel for the electricity to start. When the purple gas starts to come out of the machine, we're then required to throw two levers, one on the front of the boiler and one to the right of uh, the, next to the film reel itself. Once you've done that, then you need to push the turning wheel, the thing that pumps the steam. You've got to push it and then we've got to pull the release handle on the back of the boiler. Once that's done for getting the coil going to restoring the electricity to the, the big door that we need to get out of, we need to flip the blue switch, pull the chain and turn the key. So you're going to do that all in pretty quick sequence just to show you where all of this stuff is. So you have the key just on the side of the boiler. From here, go down the stairs and look up to the right. And this is where player two is going to start. So you need to cooperate and split the tasks up. This is the electric machine and this is where the buttons get pushed in. When you go down the stairs and over the little bit just on the side, this is the boiler lever that you see pulled down in part three. And this is the other switch, the red one here by the film reel machine uh, on the left hand side. Once you've done with those, you'll need to, one of you will need to push this into the wheel. And then the other player will go around to the back of the boiler and they're going to throw this switch just here. Once that switch has been thrown, they'll make their way around the final part of the boiler and they'll pull the chain that is just directly in front, sorry, on the, on the side. At the same time as that going on, somebody will need to pull the blue lever down and then, then turn the key again to formally start the engines. It's going to take you a couple of tries to get this right, but divide and conquer. Uh, so it's recommended that player one starts off by taking the key, player two takes the electricity, player one moves to the red lever on the panel, whereas player two moves to the front of the boiler and works on the levers that are on the boiler. Uh, and then player one also would work on the little steam wheel machine. So just to see that in action, obviously, like I said, it's going to take some practice for you guys to get it right the first time, but be warned, it is timed. So to get the Sean Road, player two has gone up to the top. Player one has gone to the key. Player one starts us off by turning the key automatically. So flitting over to player two, they're going to push the buttons in the sequence that was being displayed on the sideshow. Once they've done that, that's going to kickstart the electricity. They'll need to go down over the top and then to the front of the boiler here and hold down this switch. Whereas at the same time, player one will have moved down from the key and they would have gone to the red switch on the panel and also start to pull this one down at the same time. So these are very slow, as you'll come to notice. Once that's done, player one needs to go and push the wheels together and hold them in place until player two has thrown the release on the back of the boiler. So they need to go back up and over the stairs, pull the red handle down. And this is also very, very slow to do. Pretty much everything is slow in this area. Once you've done that, you'll want to make your way. So player two, sorry, player one needs to go to the console that is directly in front of them. Uh, and there is a blue switch on here and player one needs to start pulling the switch down it's also very slow but at the same time player two needs to go around the other side of the boiler and they want to pull the chain just here it's very quick but by the time they've done that players one blue lever will be down 
head up and then you want to turn the key and that is going to boot the door up the very big door you get a little cutscene where your characters will go over in there and watch this open up it is a bit of a pain this bit but practice follow the guides that we put into place and you should be able to get through this uh, and that big door is our exit out to the next area but we need to get there first of all Okay, so to keep things moving, player two now needs to go in behind the film reel machine and they're going to go upstairs and they're going to go straight through the door ahead of them whilst unlocking that with the green key. We're going to have a similar puzzle to what we had earlier with a slightly different twist and that's similar to the pins that we used to open up the safe to get the key out the wall. This one is slightly different as the number of dots that appear on the reel are not the same as the other side and these tiles will move around and out the way. So the idea behind it is player two will need to count the number of dots on this little wheel thing. Player one will need to go and get the answer to the problem. So they'll want to make their way over and they're going to take the left hand side and go up the stairs past the randomizing machines again. And as you come into the section, stay on the right and take the stairs up to the very top to go to the bedroom. So the answer is on the wall just here and the number of dots as I mentioned a second ago correlates to the other side. So if the person has five dots on their side they will need to point it to the dot in the bottom right hand corner. If they have three they'll need to point it into the bottom left hand corner. So in this case we've got six dots on this reel. So we need to turn that to the right place and then you've got five dots on this reel so we need to point that to the bottom right hand corner as we mentioned and keep moving the tiles around until this is completed. Now player two we need to grab that key and they are going to make their way out of the room but just on the opposite side there is a place where they can drop the key in Another same one of these systems, they'll throw the lever and that is going to go over to player number one. Switching back to player one that's still in the bedroom, turn around and you're going to see the key that you can pick up. So grab it out of the basket and then we're going to make our way downstairs. So we're going to need to use the lifts again to get across the chasm. So as you get to the bottom, take the first one that you originally used to get across to this side and it's going to send you back as it's the only way to return into this room. You'll see a second lift on your left hand side that is behind a locked gate. So as that opens up, take a left and then you want to put the key into this one and then also use this lift. Now when you're on this side, do not make the mistake I made of picking the cog up first. Pick, open up the door on the left hand side first. Because if you open, pick up the cog, you can't open the door and you can't put the cog down. So you have to go back the long way. So open up the door on the left first and now you'll be able to grab the cog. And as you come to notice, you can see practically nothing whilst you've got this. Go out that door that you just came in through and you'll want to find where the stairs are and you're going to make your way down those stairs. I have a little bit of a nightmare here, I apologize, uh, but you can't really see anything. And then as you get to the bottom of those stairs, you're going to make your way to the right and we're going to be putting this cog next to the other cog that we placed earlier. And we're going to need to go stand on top of the machine that is just in the center. So make your way up. And then you want to sit tight because we're going to need player two to come down here as well. Okay, and then back is player two. To get down where to player one is, we're just going to look to the right. Now it's worth noting this is where we're going to get our first set of achievements where we have been separated. Uh, and that is for doing the cage puzzles and the trials puzzles. So when you get separated at this point, you're going to get a different set of achievements to the other player. So you'll need to come back to this point later and chapter select through it. So kickstart this. So you want to hold down the wheel in the middle and that's going to bring down a cage. 
Now, in our scenario, player two is going to go into this cage. It doesn't matter who goes in for you. The puzzle's the same all the way. But what needs to happen is for you to get all of the achievements and trophies, you'll need to alternate and take different paths later. So player two going in the cage now for us. But for us to get the full completion, player one came back later and we replayed this chapter and then that player went into the cage. So player two gets into the cage. Player one is then going to send player two on their merry way so make your way down and there's gonna be a button that you can push uh, and that is gonna solve half of our problems So what's going to happen is player 2 is going to arrive in this very big room with a reel. They'll be able to get out of the cage once they arrive. We have a bit of a frame rate drop here, sorry. But player 2 needs to pay attention to the pictures and the shapes on the individual wheels. The puzzle is pretty much the same, but yeah, these individual shapes correlate to the answer to the puzzle. And the pictures in the inside of those shapes are going to be clues for helping player one find the answer to the problem. So there have to be communication between back and forwards between player two and player one to solve this, but player two cannot do much at this time other than just look at this puzzle. So player one, once player two has gone through the cage sequence, they're going to be winched up to the higher areas and then on the left there will be a place where they can get out. Okay, so now player one has been winched up a little bit higher. Just to give a bit of a brief about how the puzzle works on their end, we're going to walk into a room that's got a projector, and underneath that projector there are a place to enter three numbers. Those three numbers above them will, or below them, I can't really remember right now, will either have a picture of a circle, a pentagon, or a square. Now this correlates to the other player's room, so you'll see these on here. We need to identify the number that is associated with each shape. Uh, and we need to do that by communicating back with player number two. So we need to enter the numbers. We're going to start this off though by lighting the, uh, the torch that is on the back of the projector. And then we're going to make our way over to the right. Now you'll see each book has the shape in it in the top right hand corner with a number. So that number is what we're going to be entering into each thing. But we need to tell, we need to communicate with player number two what shapes that they see. So pay attention also to the fact that you've got north, east, south, west, uh, and that's the kind of the guiding line. So we have a book with a circle, we have a book with a square, and then they need to tell you what pictures they see in those shapes, and that correlates to the number that we are going to enter. So we have to find the right page with the right shapes. And that number in the top right hand corner is the number that goes into the film reel machine. So luckily this puzzle doesn't seem to change for us. So following the descriptions from player number two, you just need to go through the different pages and identify the right ones. Um, but showing you how to do this just in case you wanted to try it for yourself. So the numbers that we need to enter into the machine so under the circle, the first one is number two. Then we need to go back over to the books and we're going to then find out what the number is for the square pages. So again, find out what shapes player two has in those pictures and then take the number from the top right hand corner. And then repeat this one more time for the pentagon.
Okay, so just in case you didn't figure it out already, the numbers are 244. And that's going to go into the projector. And once you've entered those into the projector, you want to push the handle just forward. Um, we're show of showing you how to solve the puzzles along the way as well, because we didn't think it'd be a wise idea to just give solutions all the time. So anyway, from this point onwards, there's going to be changes in both rooms. Player two will be able to get into the cage again, and player one will have access to something behind a painting. Now the puzzle falls more to player two this time and their ability to rotate what's in the room. So you'll go in and you're going to see the same kind of wall as what you saw last time. However, player two can rotate specific parts of the circle as well as rotate the images in the background. So pay attention again to what is up here because we need to get this to correlate with the picture that is in the projector room. So player one will now need to make their way over to the corner and you'll see this little painting has gone up in the air. You'll want to pick up the stuff that's in this part and lose the book in the process. But grab the uh, enhancement to the lantern. You want to pop this onto the end of the projector. And that's going to put some shapes on the wall. Now, player two must match the shape positioning that they see on the wall in player one's room. However, player two cannot see everything that player one can see, so they need to use the few holes that they have in that room. It's also worth noting that north on player one's picture points to the left and not upwards, so you need to take that into account as you're solving this puzzle. Still in player one's room, you'll have this little wheel, and when you rotate this wheel, it's going to allow player two to turn a specific set of shapes. So to turn the pictures in the background, you want to point it at the cog in the bottom. To point it to the inner wheel, you want to point it to the circle. To the second wheel, you'll want to point it to the square. And to the outer wheel, you want to point it to the pentagon. So we're going to start this off by pointing at the pentagon first of all. Okay, so we are now as player two, and we're going to turn this captain's wheel in front of us to put the shapes in the right place. We need to remember what shapes in the background so the pictures in the background need to correlate with the projector in player one's room and we need to tell player one which ring we need to turn so in this case we're going to start with the ring with the pentagons on it and we just need to have one two shapes sorry one at north and one at northeast one at west and one at southeast now we need to ask player one to switch to the inner ring and we're going to rotate this one also around. Okay, and now we're going to need to keep rotating the square ring until we've got one pointing northwest, east, and south. We want to leave it in this position. And then player one is going to switch over so that we're going to move the inner ring. And then the circles just need to be one by east and one by west. Now once that is done, the player one is going to need to switch to the inner ring. So we're going to need to turn all of the pictures that are in the background. So when the center of the compass is light up, we want to just keep rotating this until we get all of the images into the right place. And once you have done that, you'll pop yourself an achievement for opening up this door. This is going to then allow you to move forward into the trials section, which is where the game gets a little bit more interesting. So now that the door's opened, player two can hop back into the cage and continue on with their cage journey. For player one, there will be a new door that is opened up in the back of the room. You'll also get a different achievement called projecting at this point in time for assisting in the escape of the dungeon. But you'll need to just turn around and you'll need to follow the corridor that is directly behind you. So in this scenario, player two is now out of the cage. They can go straight forward. And as they come through this section, they're going to open up a door and you're going to be in this kind of like Colosseum like area with people cheering on as you're about to take on some challenges. There's only one door down here, so make your way over to it and then go up. And as you get to the very top, you will need to look to your left and there is a ball. 
and player one will need to come down here for their separate achievements later but you'll need to pick this up okay so player two needs to sit tight for a second do not go on to this board yet you'll need the support of player one and i need to explain what's happening here because this puzzle is entirely random for the next sequence so make your way out of this room and you'll want to make your way up the hill and we're going to be at the top end of where player two is and we'll be looking down on them so player two you'll see them over there they've got the ball right down at the very bottom they won't be able to turn on their torch whilst they've got hold of this but it is your job to guide them across here now if they stand on the wrong shape at the wrong time in this particular part then they will fall through so to them to open the door on the other side they'll need to stand on the hammer the sickle the axe and the club and the shield in my case this will be completely different for you it is random every time if they fall through and they stand on the wrong shape then you have to redo the puzzle again so it's your job now as player one to talk to player two and tell them what to stand on next so in this case they've got to make it to the other side the shield is the last shape along the way so i need to tell them what to step on next so i'll tell brennan straight away to step on the hammer then the sickle then the axe then the club and then the shield so you see now the shapes are slightly different for brennan because we did have a bit of a fail uh, and please bear in mind each thing that you step on along the way is going to fall down behind you but player one needs to keep talking to player two and make sure that they don't get trapped by the falling ledges so in this case brennan needs to now go back to the sickle but this will not be the same for you and then he will need to make his way over to the other side so be careful not to trap yourself by accident and make sure that you only go across one block at a time that you do not go across more than two um, because otherwise you'll cause yourself to be in a situation where you cannot get back to the other side and it will take too long so once player two is on the other side the gate is going to drop and then it's going to be opening up the second gate and you'll make your way forward into pretty much the same room again so as you come into here there is going to be another puzzle except this gate isn't open this time so this room is going to take longer to cross so player one will also need to move over to the other room as well uh, again the shapes that you can stand on will be completely random but what actually needs to happen is once you reach the shape that is in the first position player two will need to stay on that shape until the timer is out so you'll see the shapes down below are all present uh, and you'll need to automatically guide player two to that shape that they need to stand on and then they'll need to wait there until everything is flipped over so if you look at the top so there's the clock on the right hand side at the top so the first one brennan needs to go to is the club then it's the shield then it's the sword the armor and then the helmet so and that's the only way we can get him across so when he reaches the club he must stand still on the club until the timer is up to kickstart this puzzle it needs to be pulled by player number one so they need to throw the switch first of all and please bear in mind sometimes the shapes up top where player one will also go into hiding so once player one has pulled the lever the gate will drop and the room will light up a bit more proficiently and player one is going to tell player two to where they need to stand so in this scenario we had a bit of a blip again so brennan's now waiting out on this shape here which is the first shape in the sequence at the top so, and that's going to cause, as you'll see, once the timer goes past, everything is going to flip sideways. If you're on the wrong place at the wrong time, you get thrown back underneath and you've got to come back up and start again. So now that they've flipped, player one now needs to guide player two directly to the next shape. And player two needs to stay put again and wait for the timer to run out. And you'll see all the other shapes in the room flip one more time. Rinse and repeat this sequence until player two has made it to the other side.
Okay, so we're now going to take on a similar puzzle to what we had earlier. So player two is going to make their way into the next room, as is player one. Again, once again, it's completely randomized So uh, as you go through, but this is the same as room one, but with a slight different twist on it. So not all of the areas are going to be visible to player one completely at the top. It's going to be kind of obstructed and even more obstructed for player two. But same concept, you need to tell them which shapes that they have to stand on to get across to the other side. But some of the fences will be blocking the vision along the way. So take note of the shapes at the top and then guide player two on the bottom on how to get to the other side. We also had a bit of a blip again on this one, I believe. Okay, so switching back to player two. Now you need to also bear in mind as you're crossing over to the other side, the ledges you stand on will fall out from underneath you. So you'll see them dip down a little bit. That means that they will fall after you step off of them. But as you can see this time around, your vision is obscured. So you need to keep pushing forward and following the directions of player one until you get to the next shape that you stand on. Just be sure to not get yourself cut off. Okay, so once player two has reached the other side, they need to go through into room number four, which is the last room for these trials. And player one will also need to do the same thing. So this is the same as the puzzle for room number two, but it's gonna have a slight twist on it this time, like the last one. Uh, there's gonna be certain shapes that are not permitted to be standing on. So player one is gonna need to guide player two to the specific shapes that are listed at the top. Player two will need to stay put on those specific shapes until the time runs out. Underneath those particular shapes, you'll see a set of three additional hexagons. Those hexagons will also contain shapes. Those shapes must not be stood on by player two because if that happens, it's gonna flip the board over. So like last time, you need to tell player to where to go but at the same time remind them that they cannot step on specific shapes so pull the lever to start this one and it's going to cause the avoidable shapes to appear underneath the top row and then you will need to guide player to across the board again so as you pull the lever quickly look up and you will see that we cannot stand on the helmet, the hammer, and the fork. Be aware they change between each shape. So now we need to guide player two across the board. So need to keep informing them, do not stand on certain things. And when they're on the right shape, they need to stay put until the time comes up. So in this case, as you can see, Brennan is specifically avoiding particular shapes and making sure he gets to the one that he needs to get to, as opposed to taking the most obvious path across. When he's in the right place, he needs to wait for the timer to run out and you'll see that all of the board will flip one more time. And then I will give him the instruction to go to the next shape, but also tell him which shapes that he cannot stand on whilst looking down and saying, hey, don't stand on that because that's gonna send you underground. Rinse and repeat this method until player two gets to the other side. Thank you. 
Okay, so once this is done and dusted and you're going across to the last shape, we are going to pop two achievements here, two different ones for each player. So you've got the one for surviving the blood trial for player two that is down in the trials arena. And you'll get the blood sport achievement if you are the player at the top side of the puzzle. So remember, for us to get separated for different achievements, we had to go into the different cages and complete the section. Beyond this point, there are no more separated achievements for this chapter. So that being done, with both players having completed the puzzle and both achievements being popped, we need to proceed forward into the next area. And to get to the next area, once you both go through your final doors, you'll be regrouped in the center room. You'll need to go down into the sewer system and follow the linear path until you reach the end. There is also a cutscene at the end of this little walkway, so we'll regroup with you at the next puzzle. Absolutely clueless. <laughs> oh, hold still a while, won't you? <laughs> oh, I apologize for receiving you in this state. I would have cleaned, but these bonds cannot be broken. Only my king can set me free. Penance! <laughs> He calls this <laughs> penance. Uh, I say he's proving a point. Do you hear? His soul is merged with the key. All you see, my king is. And my king sees all he is. <laughs> and yet, he sees you not. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> Your greatest gift is being 
utterly unremarkable. So unlike myself, <laughs> so practical. <laughs> now, in you go. <laughs> Okay, so this next puzzle is more of a maze. We're going to have to go through a series of portals. Player 2 is on the opposite side of you. And you'll see that you've got a series of horizontal bridges. Those horizontal bridges will respond and change direction to the correctly color-coded switch. Uh, if you pull one green switch and there's three green bridges, they will all move. Uh, and at the same time, each player has number coordinated portals. So if I go into portal number one, I will come out to another portal called portal number one. They are correlated to each other this way. So behind me, I've got portal one. I want to go straight through that, and that's going to bring me out at portal number one in a completely different place. We have to go through that portal in the beginning. We've got no choice. Make our way up the horizontal bridge, and we're going to want to throw the red switch on the side to flip that red horizontal bridge over there. Now we are going to switch back to player two. So they're going to go in the portal behind them also. Uh, and they're going to come out the other side and they're going to go up the bridge and then they're going to want to throw the green lever that is just here. Player two is going to need to stay put by this lever for a little while. Now flipping back over to player one, who is on the opposite side as you can see, I recommend raising your torches so you can see each other. Player one is going to need to throw the red switch one more time and then go into portal number two. Okay, so once you're through that door, you want to look to your right and you want to go up the green bridge and you want to pause at the top of that one. We're going to flip back to player two and they're going to need to throw the green switch one more time. Going back to player one, they are going to need to progress forward up the slope and we want to go over by portal number three. Pause just here, don't go in yet. We're going to flip back to player two, they're going to throw that lever one more time. Flipping back over to player one, they are going to be able to look to the right of portal three and go up and they can continue all the way up to the yellow switch. They want to wait here for a second. Player 2 is going to need to throw the green switch again and then go through the portal that's next of the green switch. Take a left and they want to continue all the way up to the top and they want to go through portal number 8. Okay, so once they have gone through portal, you'll want to look to the right and we want to go up, but you'll see the bridge is blocked. So we now need player one to throw the yellow switch that is directly in front of them. That is going to open up the path up to the top, and this is the green switch we need. So throwing that switch one more time is going to open up the pathway for player number two. So once that switch is thrown, player one needs to go back down, and then they need to throw the yellow switch one more time. Back over to player number two. They want to look to the right and make their way up the slope and they want to stop at the top of this ramp because we're going to need to go back up again. So player one is now going to need to throw the yellow switch one more time and then they'll need to make their way up the ramp on the right hand side and they will want to turn the green switch at the top. Now player two will be able to turn around and progress up the green ramp that is behind them and enter portal number nine. When they're in portal number nine, they'll be able to take a right and we're going to find our first blue switch, which we're going to need. So they'll need to throw this one. That's going to cause a change on both sides. They'll need to go back through portal number nine. From here, they'll take a right and go back down the green bridge and wait at the bottom of the green bridge. Okay, and now player one, we're back in control of player one. Throw the green switch, and then make your way back down, and then throw the yellow switch. We're now gonna to need to turn back over to player number two. So they'll be in a position where they can go back down again and through portal eight. And as they come through portal eight, we're gonna take a right, and we just wanna wait here for a moment. 
because we're going to need player one to flip the green switch again. So player one will need to throw the yellow switch one more time. And then when that switch is thrown, they will want to take a right and go up to the top and throw the green switch one more time. Now they're going to need to come back down after throwing the green switch as well so that they don't get stuck at the top. So make their way down. They want to wait by the yellow switch just here. And now we're back as player two. Player two is going to be able to keep going forward. They weren't able to go down the slope in the beginning, but they can now. When they get to the bottom, they can go through portal number six, or maybe it's nine, I don't really know. And they can throw the green switch just over this side, and that's going to change things for player one. Player one can now throw the yellow switch on their side, and they can make their way down to portal number three, and then they'll be able to go through the portal three, and they'll go directly out of the top and above where they just entered, but it'll be blocked off. So we'll need player two now again to throw the green switch one more time. And now that that's happened, they can go back through the portal that they came in through, take a left and then run all the way up to the top. Once at the top, they can go into portal eight again. And then from portal eight, they want to take a wait for a minute. This is then going to allow player one to go down the green ramp that's in front of them. As they make their way forward, they'll see a blue lever on the left. Throw this blue lever. And once that's been thrown, they can then make their way through the door on the right. So over to number four. They'll want to go through four. And as you come out into four, take a look to your right and you want to go up. And as you go up, you're going to come into another green switch and you're going to want to throw this one for player number two. So after throwing that green switch, apologies, there's a little bit of an overlap with our recordings here uh, that I didn't realize. But once that green switch has been thrown, player number two is going to be able to progress up the right hand side of them. So as you can see here, the flip of the switch hasn't happened yet, but however, it does. And once that's happened, player two can walk up and they can continue all the way to the very top. Once at the very top, they'll be able to go into portal number seven. As they go through portal number seven, this is going to take them out into a different place, but they won't be able to move any further forward because they're blocked by a blue bridge. So for this to now work, player one now needs to turn around to the right and they want to make their way back down to portal number four. When they go through portal number four, they will be able to throw the blue switch that is on their right hand side. And this is going to open up the way for player number two. So player number two will now be able to move forward because that lift is now down. They can go up one ramp, but however at this point in time they're blocked by another blue bridge. So this means player one has to throw the blue switch again. Once that's thrown, player two will then be able to progress up even further. So they'll be going all the way up to the very top and they're going to wait by the key that is just on this side as we still need to get player number one out of the box as well. So player number one, going from that blue switch, will take a right, go back into portal number four, then they will look to the right again, and then just make the way to the very top of this path, and then we are at the key. Both players will need to turn the key, and this is going to pop an achievement. It's the same achievement for you both, uh, and this will take you through into the next area, which is even more confusing than this one.
Okay, so in this room we have more portals and now rotating rooms to deal with. You'll both be in separate rooms. Now it's important to pay attention to the room that you're in because it's represented by something. In my case, I've got some dominoes, whereas Brennan has got, I think, what looks like a banjo or something like that. Now, these rooms rotate with switches in the middle of the room. And what we need to do is actually line up the doors to the images. Now, above each one of the doors in your room, Brennan is directly above me, as you can see, above each of these doors is a picture. And you can look across to the other rooms and you'll see that they've also got a picture, but you cannot see the picture that is on top of the doors in your room. So the goal here is that you need to turn the room to line up the pictures. And once the pictures are lined up, you will be able to proceed through the portal and it will take you into the room with the corresponding thing in the middle. So in this case, I am trying to line up the accordions by rotating the room, following the guidance I'm receiving from Brennan, who is directly above me looking into the room from above. Once the accordion pictures have been lined up with the next room, I will be able to go through into that room and then make my way over to the room that has the accordion in the center. So the pictures, once they're lined up, will take you into the room of the respective picture. Now that I've made it over from the domino room into the accordion room, I will now need to spin the key. This is gonna open up more opportunity for more portals. Uh, in this case, because Brennan is trapped at this point in time, so player two can't go anywhere, we'll now give them the room that they can rotate into. So as you can see from my screen, I can see that Brennan is in a room that has a what looks like a jester's shoe. And he can also see the jester's shoe on the room across. So now he needs to follow my guidance to rotate his room into the position that it needs to be. So he's going to keep pushing the stick until the pictures on top of the doors have lined up. We're targeting what looks like the jester's shoe. Now it's worth noting the, the rooms will rotate in the direction that you push the stick. So if you push the stick clockwise, the room rotates clockwise, just so that it makes it easier on the number of moves that you have to take. So once that's lined up for Brennan, he would need to go into the room with the shoe, so through that portal, and that's going to take him over to his next area. Okay, so when you're in the shoe room, there's the key, as we mentioned. Give that a turn and you're going to introduce some more puzzle segments that are going to help you get across. And this time we need to help Brennan line up the dice. So player two needs to line up the dice room. It's directly in front of them on the card room, but the dice picture that's just in front here needs to be lined up. So I'm currently telling Brennan which direction to spin the room that he is in so that he can get through into the dice room. And once that's lined up, go through the portal and that's gonna bring you out into the next place. So the next two images that are going to get lined up are the pictures of banjos. Both of these rooms have banjo pictures on top of them, but not both of them are in line straight away. So player one is still in the accordion room and player two should be in the dice room. So you'll see that player two needs to push their room until the pictures are lined up. So player two is now making sure that the banjo picture is lined up with the door at the bottom of their area so they're telling me how many times I need to keep pushing it until it's at the bottom door that is in the frame that they are next to once that's done I need to replay that same thing so we need to line up the banjo on top of their door in line with the one above the door just over here as you can see me in the room next over in the accordion room so player two now needs to push this room the number of times until both pictures are in line. In this case, it's only just one push. And then we're gonna flip over to player number one, because player one will need to enter the door with the banjo on top. Probably not even, it's not even a banjo, it's a loot, I apologize. So once the banjos are in line, player two will be in the banjo room, or the loot room, as it really probably be she called, but banjo is a better instrument. And now we're gonna need to line up the pictures for cards. 
so that the next player can go across to the card room. So the loot room has a set of cards as well as the dice room. As you can see the cards are in the top right hand corner of the dice uh, and player two is going to guide me on making sure that my picture for cards is in the adjacent picture slot to the room. So I will need to push the loot room a few times around until they tell me it's in line with the door at the bottom for them. And now I will need to guide player number two. So player one needs to tell number player two when the cards are at the right position. So they will need to line up the cards by pushing the wheel in the middle. And when the time comes, they will be able to go through the card door and into the next room. So once it's lined up, player two will enter the room. I'll now be in the card room. As you come into the card room, you'll make your way over to the other side, you'll find another key. This needs to be turned to introduce the remaining panels that we need to proceed forward with the puzzle. Because we needed more panels in this puzzle. Anyway, we need to get player 2 into the room that is with the Jester's hat now. So, as you switch back to player 1, you're going to need to follow the guidance from player two to rotate the room so that both the jester hats are in line with the room in the center where player number two is. Once that's done, player number two will be able to switch through and there's going to be a bit of a cutscene where the jester is going to come in and call you stupid. However, the room that he removes from the picture has actually got no meaningful pieces to the puzzle, so joke's on you. Uh, but player two needs to go through the jester hat room and that is going to trigger the cutscene. Okay, so once you're done receiving Jip from the Jester, we're going to need to line up the horn room for player number one to enter. So player number two is still going to be in the Jester room, and once this is all over, they're going to need to look to the room with player number one in. So once they've identified that, there's also two horns around the area, which you need to be wary of. They are still in the loot room. Okay, so once that's done, we need to line up the horns. So player two is going to need to keep pushing the room until player one says stop. Once that's happened, player two can take a little break. Player one is now going to take over. Player one is going to go through the horn door and it's going to take them into the horn room, which is pretty obvious if you haven't figured that out by now. Uh, and as we go through, it's going to take us across and we're going to need to do a bit more alignment work with the jester room. So flipping back to player number two, they're going to need to line up the harp in this room so they'll need to turn their room follow playing player one's guidance and they're going to wait until the harp is in the right position and once that is in the right position player number two will need to go into the harp room that is the only place you can reach from the horn room so once player two has got that in place player one will just need to walk through the portal But next up we are going to need to get player 2 back into the card room. So we're going to need to tell them to keep spinning their room around until it's lined up with the card doors that are on top of the what looks like a hobby horse room. So player 2 is still going to be in the jester's hat room. 
they'll need to rotate until the cards have lined up following player 1's guidance. Once they've done this, we are going to now need to line up a new type of icon, which we haven't actually had yet, which is the portal room. So this is our exit to the puzzle. So you'll see that player one's angle, he's now being told by player number two. So I'm being told by Brennan to move my room around until I've got my portal in line with the closest door to us. So I keep spinning this until that is over. And then player one will reciprocate for player two. They will need to rotate their room until the portal is lined up. And then once that is done, both players can go through the portal at the same time. So player one is now lined up, now we just need to line player two up and their portal was in the top corner. So player one needs to instruct player two until the doors are aligned. Okay, so once you're in this area, you'll both need to turn the keys that are in the corners. Okay, so give those a quick spin. Now we're going to go through the portal and you're going to be in an altered version of pretty much the same puzzle. The big differences are there are less doors, there's only four per room. However, there are alternate realities that so are actually two rooms. So when you spawn into your room, you'll be in a room where there is a sun in the middle, there is happiness, a key. You've got an egg, which is representing life and, and all of these kinds of other things. And the alternate reality of this room, you have in the room, you have sadness, you have the moon, you have death, which is the opposite of the egg. And when you turn the room of the opposing setting, it turns the other room in the alternate reality at the same time. One of the key things though that's in this room, you can actually see what's on top of the doors this time around. You don't have to rely to, on each other to tell you where, how many times you need to keep pushing it. However, when one person goes into the alternate reality, then that's what you're bound by completely. So to kickstart this off, player one needs to line up the eggs in the room. So they'll need to keep rotating it until the eggs are lined up. And when they go through their portal, they are going to still be in this reality or this this version of this room, but they're going to be in the room with the egg. So now player one is going to need to help out player number two. You've got to figure out where they are. First of all, they're in the room with the chess piece. It's the queen. They're going to need us to line up the king piece chess piece picture with the room that is closest to the pair of us. So this picture here needs to be in line with player two's closest door between player one and player two. So pushing that, that's going to rotate it. And then player two is going to need to reciprocate. They're going to need to spin at their room until the chest piece, sorry, the chest piece picture is in line with the one that player one just rotated. Now, once you go through this door, player two is going to get moved into the other version of this puzzle. As we said, the opposites are connected. So when I go through into this room, so player two does, they're going to be in the king room when they were previously in the queen room. But you'll also see around there, there's things like skulls and which represent death. The egg represents life. So I'm still in the egg room and the opposite room to Brennan was the death room. So we need to rotate this room following his guidance until the sad face is in line with one of his doors in that room, the closest door to him. That took two pushes. I had to line up the portal and the egg for that to work. So we're now going to flip back over to player two. And you can see this is what's happening on the other side. 
So this is the room of death. I'm in the room of life in the alternate reality. So when I turn the life room, it also turns the death room at the same time. So you'll see this happen without any form of prompt. That room spins and it's going to line up the two sad faces. This is going to allow player two to go through. And now they're going to be in the sadness room. So now we need to line up two pictures of what look like holy hand grenades from Worms Armageddon. Uh, this time around player two can actually rotate their room. But as we naturally said, this is going to rotate the happiness room on the other side. But when the two pictures of the holy hand grenade are aligned, player two needs to go through that portal. And that's going to bring them back into the normal version of this puzzle. Flipping back to player one. Player one is going to keep rotating the life room until the jester's stick is in line with the jester's stick. So there are two in this room. It's only one push to rotate it. That's the great thing about four doors. There's a lot less effort in terms of the number of turns that you need to make. So once you've rotated it, head through into this room and it's going to shift you over to the alternate side uh, and you're going to be in a room with a jester stick. Now we're going to have to jump back to player two and they're going to have to do some rotation on their end to help out so they need to line up the death skulls. So they need to push the room. Both death skulls are going to line up with the key and they need to go through into the alternate reality again. Okay, now we're jumping back to player number one and we're going to get them out of this reality and back to the other one. So the key doors should already be lined up. If not, please do. Make your way through the key door and that's going to bring you back. And I apologize for the frame rate here. It was a little bit foggy. I'm not sure for the reason why. Now, player one needs to line up the eggs again. But as you can see, there are multiple versions of the eggs. But there is one working version here. So you'll need to turn the door so that the egg is lined up. Thankfully, that's just pushing it to the right once. And then once that one is lined up, player one will need to go through into the room that is signifying the egg. And once they're in this room, they need to line up the portal doors together. So the one with the portal on the top with the portal picture over there for the key room. So giving that a spin, that is going to line that up for player number one. And this also means that the portal rooms in for player two in the other world have also been lined up for the room that they're in. Both players will need to go through the portal door. Uh, and as you go through the portal door, it's going to be the same kind of sequence again. It is going to bring you back into one room with one portal and two keys. Both players will need to turn the keys at the same time. And that will exit you to, sorry, that will allow you to exit the room of music box or whatever it is. You'll both bag yourself the same achievement at the same time here. So as you can see, it's already aligned for player number two. But when you come in, yeah, both need to turn the keys. You both get the same achievement uh, when you both go through the portal. And at the same time, that is pretty much it now for chapter number one. It is the longest chapter in the game. The other chapters are not as long, but you should be popping some achievements uh, now as you go along the way. So as you come in here, both of you are going to have a stall in front of you. Take a seat and endure the cutscene. Yes, 
by King Le Tai, a treacherous demon caught his ear, offering immortality via contract. When death came knocking, King Bartholomeus signed his name right there, but in his haste never checked for any fine print. That fool condemned his realm and all within to this cold prison. Now, naturally, it's very important. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely crucial. Nothing happens to his contract, my niece. Surely, all hell will break loose. Listen carefully, Furby. You'll never get anywhere in life unless you learn when to start running. What is mine? You shall pay for your sacrifice. Okay, so for this next part, you're both going to be out in the snow. It's pretty much just a walk to a place called the chapel. So I'm not going to narrate this part. I will just reach, catch up with you when it comes to the next part. Though. So just follow the path, keep walking, and I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, so we're going to come up on our first puzzle for chapter two. Now it's worth noting here, the person that goes into the owl secret room will get a different achievement from the person that is outside. So this is one of the points you'll need to come back and replay later if you're going for the full completion. So to describe this puzzle, on the left hand side you're going to have this little setup with these puppets and we're going to need to find the heads that go on the appropriate puppets. Uh, and we need to pass puppet heads between the two different players. Player 1 is going to be passing that through this machine here. Uh, and for them to access the secret room, you need to click on the owl head just here. If this is your second playthrough and you're mopping it up, it needs to be the person that did not go into this room this time. So once you've pressed onto the head, the owl is going to start talking and this is going to give you a clue for this scene. However, the answer to the puzzle is always the same. On your right is the area where we'll place the puppet heads. And around the rooms, you're going to find these descriptions in these books, as well as these images. So listen to what's going on and pay attention to what's on the display over there. But these descriptions display 
the person, their image and their look and what they're capable of doing. There is one for the priests, there is one for the royal family, and there is the one for the staff. So these three books are represented across the board. And you've probably already noticed as I'm walking around this room, there's a series of puppet heads that are dotted around. Those puppet heads will match the pictures that are in the books. So, for example, if we need to get the guard person, it's going to match the picture in the book and like so forth and so forth. But to actually kickstart this off, we need to do the king and the jester. So just to make sure that we're getting the right ones, just flip to the page with the king uh, and make sure that the king has a crown with a bob-like haircut and a long hefty beard, which he does in this scenario. So it's the one on the table just here. And then you want to take that head over to the mechanism in the corner. Uh, and then to the left of that mechanism, once you've placed the head, there is a lever to pull. And that's going to send the head over to player number two. Okay, so player two is now going to be able to pick up the king's head once it comes through in their system. You can see the torch player. Uh, one through With the wall, but grab the head off of the little top. puppet, even though it's still burnt. talking to you. Take it over to the little display on the other side, and you want to place the king's head on the person in the chair. Once that is done, we're going to flip back to player number one, and we're going to go grab the jester's head this time. So just to make sure that we've got the right one, you can pull the lever as well at this moment just to bring the machine back, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but make your way back over to the corner where you found the king's head. And then just have a quick check to see the appearance of the jester. There is only one jester head in this room anyway. So once you've done that, you'll then want to grab that off of the table, which is for me on my left hand side. And we're going to take that back over to the machine in the corner. And then player number two is going to pick that up and place it on the head of the other puppet on the show. At this point in time, you also need to pay attention um, once that last head has gone on to the clue given by the owl. He trusts me more than God's or wife. His royal majesty wasted his own lands and people to pursue a terrible ambition. His jester whispered into his ear. This is the tyrant we resist. Who shelters our secrets and souls? Who keeps out the king? And his call. So now we are looking for individuals that are capable of building things uh, and also capable of building contraptions. So I'd recommend taking a look at the Book of Priests and we're going to look at Yidi the Steenhauer. Uh, and this person is able to create and build things like the walls. So we're looking for a puppet's head with a big purple hat and flicky hair on the side which was quite close by for me pick this one up take it over to the machine and we're going to turn it over to player number two and this is the puppet on the left hand side Now for this one we're actually going to go after the clockmaker, Aland. So in the same book that we were just using, you'll want to flip the page over until you see uh, Aland, or Alard, my bad, the clockmaker. So he likes to make different contraptions and all of this kind of stuff. So we now need to search this room for a priest 
with a bob cut and a big mustache it was directly behind me luckily enough and we're going to send that over to player number two and this goes on the puppet on the right hand side Correct. The Masons tore down the ruins of Rockberry to construct new homes that protect us from the unending winter. The clockmakers designed secret doors and contraptions that allow us to hide from a king's gaze. Who guides our journey by starlight? Who forges the ancient way? Okay, so now we need to go find the Stargazer. So as the owl mentioned, we need to find somebody who knows how to navigate by the stars. So let's make our way over to the book. We're going to try and find Hyo Glass Bearer. So it's a lady with long blonde hair and a hat that we need to find. on the back table over here for me. Once you've done that, take that over to the machine and this is going to go on the left puppet for player number two. I studied the stars and know where to go. The and once that's in place, we need to head on to our next character, and we're looking for Yesbrent. So Yesbrent is a priest, and it's a bronze lighter, and we're looking for a guy with a very big beard and a bob and a purple hat. Once you have this one, you want to take it over to the stand and exchange it with player number two. This is going to go on to the right puppet. I study schematics from pages of your form. Correct. Desperate for a way to escape, our brightest mind studied lore long lost and forbidden. They discovered how to navigate out of this frozen waste using the power of the moon and stars. Who are Barry's unlikely friends? Who defy our king until his reign? Okay, so one last time we're going to find two more puppets and once we're done with this we'll pop our achievements for this puzzle. We're actually looking to find the princesses and in this case I'm looking for Amelia who's already on the book open. She has a beret and a hairpiece on the left hand side. You want to pick that up and take it over and this one goes on the right hand puppet. In Valdemar's memory, I must... And now we're back as player number one and we're going to go after the next princess puppet. So we have Amelia, but we also have another one, which is Catherine, who looks like somebody out of the film Aladdin. On the left hand side we found her between the specific bookshelves. Pick that one up, take that over 
Uh, and once player two has put that into place, that is going to complete this puzzle. And it's going to both bag yourself two different achievements. One for assisting in solving the puzzle and one for solving the puzzle. Once that's over and the, the owl has done the appropriate discussion, that's going to open up the doorway allowing player number one to leave. And the owl is then going to open up a doorway into the chapel beneath its body. So, last time, head over to the puppet thing. You want to grab the head. This is going to go on the left puppet. And then you want to listen to what the owl has to say. The achievements will pop once player one comes out of the room. I will hide the book of gold. Correct. The king's own daughter flows against Star Sovereign, though he knows it not. They wish to undo their father's crimes against our people. Ah, their souls be blessed. Their rebellion is our greatest weapon. Okay, so once you've got your achievements, we're going to start making our way in. And we're as player two at the moment in time, so there are no more separated achievements in this chapter. But you both need to go into the confession booth in the room just here. And you will get separated once again, but it doesn't matter too much. So once you're through the confession booth and it's done the loading screen and secretly in the background, the player two is going to want to walk straight forward and there's a lift directly in front of them. They'll want to hop onto that lift. We need to wait for player one to go around and winch player two up to the top. So that is on the other side in the chapel area. You want to hop up and there's going to be a lever crank thing that they can turn and winch player two up. Now player two has to unlock the room below for player one for this puzzle to continue. So once you're at the top, player two needs to follow the walkway around and we're about to embark on our next puzzle and I need to explain how this is to solved to you again it's handling more puppets but making sure that they're going in the right places at the right time so when player two is off they want to make their way around and go to the right and up and over and they're going to go into this room on the end so as you make your way into this room you're going to see a whole bunch of clues that we need to be fed back to player one so as you come in this puzzle is a little bit for later, but you'll see in this room you'll have a switch that we will need to eventually pull, not just yet. And in here you're going to see a cabinet which kind of explains the way certain people look. This is representative of the puppets below. You have people in the bronze heiter family and these are the people that look like that in that cabinet. So the puppets represent the glass bearers here as well. Those people belong to those families. Now when you throw this switch it's going to open up a door below which is going to open up a room with even more information but player one a lot of the work is on this person now so flipping over to player one who's still by the lever in this case our goal is to put the right puppets in the right seats so you'll see here for example we've got priest and on the floor we've got the clock or the bronze height symbol by their feet these seats belong to those individuals and we need to use process of elimination to see who sits here. Red indicates that it's a royal. White indicates that it's just a normal person. However, the thing on the cushion on the floor indicates what family that person belongs to. When you make your way into the newly opened up room, you're gonna see a bunch of puppets that are hung up that represent those people. All of them must be seated. When you go over to the right, you'll see some more puppet heads. We don't know what family this is in the beginning, but we figure it out through process of elimination. And then on the left, you'll see the royal family, which is only three heads in this one in particular. But also if you pay attention, you'll see that the 
same head is in this opposing family. Now you want to make your way over to the centerpiece just here and there's a code of conduct. Only men can sit on another bench with another man. So you can't have mixed genders on the same bench in this scenario. So luckily for us, this actual puzzle is not randomized. So we can just start grabbing. But just to give you kind of a clue, pretty much the bronze clock person is the keystone to start solving this puzzle if you want to start solving it on your own but <clears throat> the puzzle does not change with every playthrough and practice run that we've done with this so we're going to just show you the easiest way to do it but by process of elimination you can figure out who sits in what seat so in this case i'm picking up the blonde lady who is the priest so this means that she has to go on one of the front rows and she can only sit next to another female priest and this lady belongs to the stone hammer family we make our way back over and we're going to grab the second female priest and she has to sit next to the one we just placed Okay, so by process of elimination, the two people that need to go on the bench opposite to the right that are priests have to be the guys. Uh, and then upstairs in one of the cabinets, it tells you which uh, person belongs to the clock family. But the last person is the guy with the mustache that needs to sit on the right and the other one must sit on his left. So next up, we're going to start grabbing off of the rack on the right hand side. We're going to grab the lady with the grey hair and the bun. And she is going to go on to the bench behind the guys. And she's going to sit sorry, on the opposite side behind the other women on the right hand side of that bench. We'll make our way back over. And we need to grab the lady with the green hat. And we're going to take her across to the other side. And she's going to sit next to the lady we just placed. Make our way back into the room. And we're going to keep focusing on the same group of people. So we're going to take this lady just here with the green hat and the red hair. And we're going to make our way over and we're going to place her on the royal seat. As you remember I pointed out earlier she was the only lady to exist in both cabinets. And then on the right hand side there is another lady that we need to gather uh, with the curly flicky hair and she needs to go next to the member of the royal family now on to the back row okay so first we're going to grab the guy with the hat and the beard and the mustache so the goatee and he's going to go on the back row and he's going to go on the furthest pew away from us uh, and we're going to put him down on the seat that is on the right hand side we're now going to go get the person that sits next to him so make your way back into the room look for the guy with the receded hairline and the monocle Once you've done that, we're going to make our way back in and we're going to grab the guy with the fancy fringe and also a monocle. And we want to place him in the seat on the left, on the back. And then by process of elimination, this is then going to leave only one puppet to go into one place. So make your way over, grab him and drop him down. Once you've done this, this is going to trigger some changes in the upstairs room where player number two is. So, as you see, player two can still look down into the room and guide player number one. Uh, and as you can see, I'm still putting out the process, so a bit of a clip overlap. But upstairs where player two is at this moment in time, when you turn around and look to the right and go back into this room, 
These pictures were originally locked behind a grate. And once this happens, it is going to open up the gate and we're gonna see all of the people that are in the seats. Now we need to identify who are the members of the resistance and to do that we need to follow a little puzzle that's in player one's room. So the ruling here is, okay, so these individuals, so once per family there is a member of the resistance. A member of the resistance cannot sit in front of or behind another member of the resistance. Now the obvious clue on this one is the individual that sits in the front seat in the clock the priest so we need to describe what he looks like back up to player number two and player number two needs to click on his image and when he's successfully clicked on the right image a little cross is going to appear above his head but that means the person that sits behind him cannot be a member of the resistance and we need to identify the individual resistance members within the family so a little bit of process of elimination, but it's always the same case. It's the same answer to this puzzle. So once you click it, that's going to pop up on the other side. You want to click the guy on the far right middle. You'll then need to click the bottom of the second column and the bottom of the third column. If you've done this correctly, this is going to open up another room for player two and it's going to open up the organ for player one. At the same time, you'll both get the Guess Whom's achievement or trophy. Okay, so we have another process of elimination puzzle on our hand. And we're going to play the songs correctly in the right order. So the organ has the keys on that we can play with. But the clue on the left hand side is that we have the set of notes that translate to the symbols that you'll see on the machine. So we have to translate what does that actually mean. And then on the right hand side, you'll get the biggest clue of the lot. It's Yidi followed the original composer Allard, making only small changes to the music as they went along. So that means for the order of the songs, we need to identify the small changes between the first song and the next song. And that leads us to understand who is the next music track that we need to play. Each song is four notes long. Now as player two, when you come into the room, so this room contains the other half of the notes mapping to the puzzles. And as you'll go through, you'll see that there's music pieces that you need to pick up. And those translates to the keys down below. But we need to identify the order that they need to go up on the wall. Now we need to start with the one that says number one. And then what we will see is that Yidi made a small change between number one. Okay, and now we need to place Yidi the Elder. As you can see, he only changed a fraction of the music. Next up, we will want to place Falco. And then from Falco, we are gonna place up Nanki. I think that's how you pronounce it, I apologize. And then when you wanna place up Yidi the Younger and then Wolfard. So each of those composers changed a little bit of the music compared to the last one, but it all remains pretty similar for the most of it. There's only a few note changes each time. The way we figure this out is by identifying who made the change to the music. Uh, and it's only small changes in this case. So now player two will need to guide player one on which notes to press. Uh, and in this case, it has always been the same every single time. Okay, so the first keys we're gonna push is G, A, C, D. And that's gonna kick start the first song by Allard. And next on that list is G, F, C, B. Now, if you make a mistake, be sure to click the button in the corner. Uh, but yeah, again, G, F, C, B. So 
So next up on the list, we're going to play Falco's song, which is G, C, C, D. Now we have the critic song, which is G F C C. Okay, so the next song we're going to play is G Yidi the Younger, which is C, F, G, C. And then for the final one, we're going to play E, F, G, A. This is the last song that you need to play in the sequence, and you'll both unlock the achievement for Refrain of Resistance. So what that's going to do, that's going to open up some switches above the organ and it's actually the end of chapter 2. We need player 2 to come back to the lift machine in the center. So once they're done playing about with the music, turn around and backtrack to the area. They'll need to use player 1 to ride the winch up, raise the winch up, but also to lower it down. And then once they are both down on the ground floor, we're going to need to take a trip over to the back of the organ. Once you go to the top side, there is leathers on either side that both players must pull to trigger the next cutscene and opening the way outside for chapter three to start. So make your way up. These two reels will come into play and hold them down and enjoy the cutscene.
Okay, so now the cutscene is over. You're going to see this thing appear in the middle of the church and replace the people. We need to put some things from the town center into the machine. Make your way over to the door and head out. And then when you're on the outside, there is going to be a lift down where you can both pull on the lever. You'll need both players in the place at the time to do so. Uh, and unfortunately, as player two comes out, player one is already gone. And lingering around outside being creepy. So once that's done, make your way over to the lift, which is just at the bottom of the rocks here. Both of you need to pull the lever at the same time and it's going to send you down into the main town center. The first area that we are going to is the graveyard. Do not go to the other areas. Well, you can do if you want to. It just means you won't be following along with the guide in order. But there'll be timestamps below to get yourself into the right place. There's also a brief cutscene here. Trouble finding the infestation, my lead. Silence, serpent. This does not concern you. Does it not? You know, they escaped your keep. They are out there. <laughs> oh, release me, my lord. Set me free. And I will hunt them down. Bring them to your justice. <sighs> so be it. You will bring them to me. <laughs> As you get down here, you'll see that you can go to Rockbury Castle, back to the chapel, to the Nautilus, or over to the vault. And we're actually going to go to the vault, even though it's the, the graveyard to begin with. So we want to make our way past this central statue, and we're going to go up the hill on the right-hand side. So from that signpost, past the central piece, staying on the right, and player two is going to need to stay with you as well, because you won't be able to move forward. Uh, and just as a heads up there, the start of this chapter there is a couple of achievements that you can unlock but this is for taking different paths so they are different achievements and trophies so you will need to replay this particular section uh, and I'll tell you where that separation point is so when you're both in the tomb you'll need to hold down the handle and turn it together Once that's over, there'll be a door that you can go through. There'll be a small loading screen. You'll need to follow the path up the hill, and we're going to go into effectively what is called the Royal Graveyard, and we're going to come up to our point of separation. So the separation is one individual will go underground whilst the other person stays overground. So as you're coming through this section, player one and player two will eventually come up to this kind of big area where there's a few graves around and all this kind of stuff you want to stay on the right and player one this is the point of separation by the way is going to go over and use the coffin that is just here and they're going to do a breast impression of uh, Timmy from the TV show Lassie and they're going to go down the well So the achievement you'll get now is both the same. It's for me keep making it to the Royal Graveyard. But on the right hand side for player one, now once they're at the bottom of the well, they're gonna see another dead explorer. Next to them is a clue. 
and a pickaxe. We're going to need both. The clue is going to tell you uh, what you need to do to get the hidden vault. We need to find the keys. And then we also got a pickaxe which is allow us to chip through walls like the one ahead. So we're going to push forward until we hit a dead end with player number one. So make sure you get your torch out. It is dark down here but it's relatively easy to navigate. You want to follow the pathway around and you want to keep turning right at every opportunity that you get. And then eventually you'll hit a point where you'll have to turn left because the wall forces you to do so. And we're going to take a right and walk into our next puzzle. So the idea behind this puzzle is we've got to get the right little stone things in the right place. And the symbol on the left indicates what can be traded for what. So we've got half of the clue here. The other half is going to be with player two. We need to grab these little stones just from the bottom and we need to trade to make sure we've got the right stones to go underneath these stones we've got here. And we use this little trading device between trading from underground and up to the overground. So as you can see, we've got all these little symbols. We can start off by player one uh, is going to have the crown with five pieces and drop it in. But for that to work, we need player two to also trade something with us. So from the coffin, player two is going to be doing their best impression of Lassie whilst they try to get player number one out of the well. They're going to go from this well and they're going to take a right and a door that was not open before is going to open up. You go up the top of the hill and underneath the owl door. And as you go straight forward, you see this like kind of bandstand dome like area. And as you get underneath it, there's going to be a bunch of stone slabs like player two's got, sorry, player one has underneath just here. So you need to pay attention. This is the other half of the trading puzzle that you'll need to communicate with the person below ground. And this is the other part of the trading machine. So we're going to need to swap it over to make sure that we've got the right coins to go underneath the right ones. How you determine what right coin goes underneath is also based on the same picture. So you can say, for example, uh, underneath the five crown, you can put a, uh, a piece of chain uh, and we've got to get all of the pieces into the right place. You know when you've got the right piece in the right place because it will turn to the left. But we're going to start off by trading the three piece crown for the five piece. And then player two will need to pick that up. Player one is then going to need to pick up the three piece crown from the recession uh, and they're going to need to place in the clock. Once that's in, player two is going to need to turn over the sword to player one. Now we need to trade the crown with three points for the clock. Now there needs to be a trade of the chain for the crown with five points on top of it. Now player one doesn't necessarily need to pick up the crown again, but player two can just trade the crown three back for the crown five automatically. Next up the player one is going to need to grab the crown with three points and they're going to need to trade the potion for the book. Again, player one does not actually need to pick up the book at the point in time because player two just needs to swap back for the chain. So player two does not need so player one does not pick anything up at this time. They can just put the crown five back into the machine and they will get the chain back. Player one will need to pick up the crown five and they will need to place in the sword. Player two is going to drop the shield in and swap that over for the sword with player one. We then need to trade the clock for the sword. So player one now needs to grab the sword and we're going to drop into the recess 
crown with the three points. Okay, so player two is needing to drop the clock in. And a bit of an overlap of clips here, but player one will need to put the three crown in. So that's going to come back up to player number two. You'll see it in this clip, but you'll also see me putting it in in the next clip just so that uh, not to cause confusion. So placing the crown, swapping the crown for the clock. And now that this is done, we can start placing the tiles back in their retrospective places. So directly underneath the sword, we're going to need to plop the shield in. Once we're done with the shield, we will need to get the sword and place that underneath the shield. We need to place the king's crown under the queen's crown and then the clock under the sword. We now need to flip back over to player number two. They need to repeat the same thing on their side. Remember to communicate with each other if you're not sure what goes underneath. Uh, so we need to then take by placing the queen's crown under the king's, the chain under the king crown, the book underneath the chain, and then the potion underneath the book. Once this is done, this is going to open up two doorways. So both of you are going to get the obsolete oval achievement. Player two does not need to go down into this new doorway yet. Uh, however, for player one, it is mandatory for them so that they can proceed forward. But we're about to embark on our next puzzle. So you're going to make your way down into this cave. It is pretty dark, just to warn you. You're going to come up to this grate. We're going to have to open that up later. Take a left and you want to knock the wall down with your pickaxe. And when you're in the next room, we're going to have to surrender our pickaxe over to player number two, which is needed for them to be able to provide you the necessary things that you need to progress whilst you're underneath the ground. So drop the pickaxe in the bucket and player two is going to be sent on a grave digging mission. So we need to pay attention to these things around the room. So we have the classic clue of the different families, but on the coffins, we're going to see these clues. So like here, a maker of the clock, she admired the peacock. Turning around to the corridor, we're going to see these caskets with white hand marks on them. If you pop them open, they're going to give you additional clues for finding the keys. Uh, that's the final descendant of the glass bearer line. On your right hand side you're going to see a series of birds that are liked by the people. And then there's also these family trees down in these areas. I'm also going to show you where the remaining clues are. So to the right of the broken family tree you're going to find one about the Steenhauer family. And then to the left we are going to go down on the right hand side. In here you're going to see the bronze heater family tree. And then if you come out of this area and you take a right immediately and go through the small gap, you'll find another two coffins. So this one says chose the bird he loves as his son's name. And the one next to it is the triple X grave lies in the same row as his father. Just to the left of that, you've got the stone hammer tree. And then making your way up into the central piece, we want to take a right, go past the Say the uh, central well bit. There's another clue about the keys that doesn't tell you a lot. It's more of a riddle. And then to the left of the family trees, you'll find the glass bearer timeline. So we're going to go after the first clue, which is in the center, which is the clue for a maker of the clock. She admired the peacock. That this means it. This person belongs to the clockmaker family tree. And on each family tree, you will see the gender of an individual. And then in this case, we can only see a few females. So we have the choice of Nanki, Truden, and Swan Child. And this person loved the peacock. So player two is going to need to turn around and you'll be in this area. And they'll see here, for example, the different family tree markings are above these bricked up walls, which you can take down with your pickaxes. So it's effectively the mausoleums for these different families. Once you've had a quick look at those and you've identified yourself with where they are, we're going to need to go to the top of the hill. And at the top of the hill on the left hand side, you are going to find the pickaxe. So, and that is just to the left of the bronze hider family. I don't know how to pronounce it, I do apologize. But once you're at the top, you want to pull on the handle. This is going to bring up the pickaxe from the well. You want to pull that one out because we're going to need that to dig up some graves. 
So from here, make your way back down the stairs. So this is a member of the clockmaker family tree that we need to find, which is at the right at the bottom of the stairs. And we're going to pick axe through this wall. And once you've done that, we need to find signs of a female. So Trez, so we come into the back here on the right hand side. It was Trudent, who is also a fan of the peacock. If you look on top of the grave, there's a picture of a Greek peacock. And in here, you're going to find a key. Now, just be warned, you cannot get this wrong three times in a row, because otherwise the other character is going to pass out. So we need to find the rest of them. So this next one is the Steenhauer who sleeps beside her brother. So we need to identify brothers and sisters and they are got to be in the graves next to each other in the Steenhouse mausoleum. So make your way down to the family tree so we can see the connections between the family. Uh, and you'll notice that this is linked to the, uh, the Engel and people like Gertrude. So this is a brother and sister, let's not forget that. So we want to go find the Gertrude Grave as player number two. So exit out of this mausoleum and then on the right hand side you will see the Stonehammer Grave. You'll want to interact with that and we're going to make our way and we're going to look for Gertrude or Gertrude. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. But it is the middle grave on the left hand side. Dig that up and you're going to find your next key. Okay, so on to our next clue, and we are going to go after the glass bearer one in this scenario. So we're going to mix it up a little bit, and that is to the left of the five-handed door. So the clue is, in this case, the final descendant of the glass bearer line. So we have to find the person that died last. Uh, so if you look at the glass bearer family tree, you want to probably target some of the people that are at the bottom of this tree, and we need to find the one that has the earliest, sorry, the most recent death date, not the earliest, the most recent. So player two will need to go digging a bit more. Okay, uh, so from here, player two needs to turn it out and go out the main way they came in. Take a right and continue down the hill. And it's on the right hand side. You'll find the glass blower area. Uh, and in this case, it's the same every time for us. It's Rindwi, if that's how you say it. It is the grave on the second uh, as soon as you enter. So just check the dates on the graves to answer this one. We're going to go after our next clue. And this one is about somebody naming their son after their favorite bird. So this is down to what is on their graves uh, and the name of the person. So. It's not this triple X one. We're going to give this one a miss for the minute because it's the most complicated one. But this one says, chose the bird he loved as his son's name. So, and this is linked to the bronze Heiter family. And if you look at the list, you'll see, for example, there's two cases of people being called Robin that are male on that tree. So player two needs to make their way over. And this particular uh, graveyard area is next to the well that we were using earlier to transition the pickaxe. So make your way up to the top of the hill, go past the well, uh, and then you'll be able to knock the wall just here down. And we're going to look for the father of somebody with a son as the name of Robin. So you have the choice of Robin or Yesbrent. Uh, by process of elimination, it is actually Yesbrent because he has a Robin on his grave. So dig that up, grab the key, and then by process of elimination further, because if you've actually done any exploring that you'll notice there's several graves in the area that are named triple X, but this one doesn't actually give you a clue to the family in the slightest. So you just kind of have to figure it out by process of elimination. So it's anybody that is not on any of the family trees in the same role as their father. So you have to find the graves and figure out who is not on a marked grave. And lucky enough, because we're in this last one here, it's actually in the same area. So turning around, so player two will go across to the triple X grave to the right and dig this one up. So once that's done, you want to grab the keys 
and we're gonna make our way back to the well. Okay, so from where you are, turn around, and we're gonna go back out the way we came in, obviously. Take a right and then take a right, go to the top of the hill, and then player two is gonna to need to start dropping the keys into the buckets and spinning the handle to send them down to player number two. So player number one, player number one needs to grab the keys out of the bucket and you need to rinse and repeat this process. Okay, so for player number one, you wanna backtrack to the center and you'll see that the bucket is gonna be going up and down. But each time it comes down, you need to grab a key out. You need to rinse and repeat this until it is all done. Uh, it, now, if you get a message stuck on your screen like I did, just go look at another clue and it'll get rid of it. I don't know why, but it seems to stick at this point in time in the game for some reason. Okay, so once you have all of the keys, we want to make our way over to the door and then just use all of the keys on the hands appropriately. So keep doing so and you're going to bag yourself on achievement for entering the vault. Uh, and player two will also gather another achievement or trophy, but it's not going to be the same one as the person underground in the well. So player one is going to get the Descendants Inheritance Achievement or Trophy and the player number two above ground is going to get the Grave Sins Achievement or Trophy. Remember you can chapter select back here later and you can swap the roles over uh, but just so you can see it this is the achievement popping on player number two screen. So next up we're not done here yet we've still some more digging to do it's going to take a, a little while uh, to wrap this little bit up well, I'll say not too much longer but we've got some more puzzles to do. So going from player one, they want to make their way into the newly opened door. And as they come through this area, you're going to see to your left, you're going to see a map on the floor and a pickaxe. You want to pick up the pickaxe because we're going to need to do that digging down here. But the map is representative of the graveyard at the top. So you will need to explain to player number two, and this is random every time, take into account the tree in the center the rough area of where this is. So in this scenario, this is to the right of the well, but between the two graveyards, between two walls. So player two is gonna go find that area. And when they found that area, this is always random. They're gonna find this little clump of snow. They wanna dig that up and it's gonna open up a chest and it's gonna have a number on it. That number is a clue to the next puzzle. And take into account what it says here, it says 52, which means we've got to find a picture down below with five circles and two bracket kind of symbols. So for player one, a new door has now opened up. Uh, and we need to bear in mind that player number two is telling us to look for a picture with five circles and two brackets. So look above each of these doors, eventually you are going to find one. Once you find that one, you need to take out your pickaxe and you need to give it a quick whack and you're gonna get the second map that is required for player two. So you need to bear in mind that your clue from player two will not be the same as mine, but just bear in mind that circles represents the tens. So if you've got five, 50 in this case, you need five circles and then the brackets represents the digits. Once you find your grave that mines up to the one above, you want to smash through the wall and you're going to find your second map. Same behavior as the map that we looked at on the floor a second ago. You need to give the rough idea back to player two where these are. And this is to the top right of the tree in between another wall. So player two is going to need to go find this. And it's not going to be in the same location for you. However, when you do find it, it's going to have this white clump of snow sticking up out of the ground and then you'll be able to interact with that. 
So for us, luckily it wasn't too far away. It's down at the bottom of the hill. And it's on the right hand side by one of the doors where we came in. And you'll be able to dig that one up. And we're gonna get the same puzzle again. So I now need to look for a door with three circles above it and four brackets, four lines. So remember, the tens are circles, the digits are brackets. So I need to find that door with the three circles and the four brackets. Once you've done that, you'll be able to knock through this wall, uh, and that is going to give you a cog. Player 2 would have also received a cog from one of the chests that they opened up upstairs. We've got a nice little small cog, uh, and we need to backtrack to the great room. So turn around, make your way back. We want to take a left as we come through this room, and we want to go through the gateway, and then take a left just here. It's going to take you back into a room with a big metal grate and you want to put your cog just in the wall over here uh, and that's going to open up the door well sort of because we need player two to put their cog in so switching back to player two they need to make their way back to the central kind of bandstand area and they've got their cog in hand which is at the top of the hill in the center and there's a stairwell going down that was behind the puzzle we opened earlier and when you get far enough down, which is quite a few floors actually, you're going to find player number one behind the other side of the grate. Take out the cog and you want to place it into the gap on the side here. And that is going to pop the day open. You're also going to get the cache chase achievement, discover the hidden treasure for player two. And player one is also going to get an achievement, but it's a different achievement this time to player number two. So you're going to get the achievement for discovering, assisting in discovering the ancient treasures, which I think probably player one actually discovered the treasure. No offense, player two. But uh, go back down into the hands room. And where you are going into the hands room, you're going to find this wheel in the middle. Both players will need to engage with it, and it is going to bring up one of the key pieces that we need to take back to the chapel. So give this a push. And then this is going to pop up something called an astrolabe. So this is going to go back to the chapel and it's going to go into the machine that we brought up from the bottom. This gate is going to have opened up on the side here, so both players will need to go through it. Uh, because you can't take your torch out with an astrolabe or run, you need to kind of have player to guide you a little bit through the tunnel. It gets a bit dark, uh, but eventually you're going to have a bit of a cutscene and you will be back out in the open at the crossroads sections where you came down from the chapel. So once you're back here, you're going to want to make your way over to the other side and you want to place the astrolabe on the lift. Uh, and when it's on the lift, both of you need to pull the lever to go all the way back up to the chapel.
Once you're back up, you want to pick that up again, and we're going to go back inside. And we're going to go over to the machine that is in the center. I don't think it matters where you put this astrolabe piece, uh, but whatever it does, it will go in, and you'll bag yourself an achievement for doing so. So open up the gate. And then once you're on the inside, you're going to see the telescope thing in front of you. And you just want to place that on one of the rings. This is going to bag you an achievement. And once you've done that, you want to head back down out of the chapel and down into the town center area. Okay, so we're going to go to Rockberry Castle. So that is on the left-hand side of the statue as you come in. You see the area is getting a bit darker and full of crows as you're going through, which is good progress. Make your way out onto this wood, and you want to go down all the way to the kind of middle section just here. As you come down, you'll be able to turn right, and then you go to the end, and you're going to find this winching system. Both you and player two need to do it from either side. It doesn't matter, just hold it down and eventually it's going to bring up a chairlift. Now that chairlift is going to have a fellow dead explorer on it. I think it's Brennan from the previous playthrough. We were here together. Uh, but you need to address the situation by taking them off the seat. Then it doesn't matter which seat either of you sit in, just hop in. You're going to bag yourself some achievements on the way down, or say an achievement on the way down. Uh, but I'm not going to write the section because it is just you riding on a chairlift. I'm also going to cut it short for the sake of not having too long a video. So I'll meet you at the other side. Okay, so now we are starting to come into Rockbury Castle, uh, and as you come in, you'll notice that if you look up, you see a swinging light that is kind of going backwards and forwards. We are going to need to fix this for our next puzzle to work. So as we come down, you'll end up at the bottom. Uh, you just need to follow this path forward until you reach a drawbridge, and that's got a lever underneath a backpack on the right. Okay, so let's get to fixing that light. We want to move forward, and as you come through this area, you're going to see eventually a drawbridge that is up with a lever next to it, and on top of that lever is a backpack. That backpack contains a clue about the puzzle ahead, and we have to do some light reflecting and shadow creation to create a picture of an owl. Hold the lever, though, and it's going to drop the bridge. Just for the record, though, this puzzle does not work yet at this point in time. We have to go about fixing that light, because without light you cannot cast shadow. So, moving forward, go all the way down to the very end until you reach an icy kind of section.
When you reach this icy section, you will both need to go up the wooden planks that are on the left hand side because we've got to do a little bit of a walk to go fix the light. So make your way up. You will get separated once you use the lift at the top, but it doesn't account to any differing achievements. So I personally go for the side on the left uh, and player two goes for the side on the right. Once you're both in, you need to hold down the handle and that's gonna winch you both up to the top. Once you're at the top, we're going to focus on player one for the beginning because player two is not going to actually be able to do any much movement at this time. Player one needs to continue up into the tower and you're going to find this lever just here. Give that a pull and that's going to open the way for player number two to move forward. But now player one needs to go back down and they go underneath the tower they just climbed up. Follow the pathway around and you're going to come across this seat. You want to sit on that seat, it's just like the ski lift from earlier, and that's going to take you to the other side. Once you get off at the other side, you want to make your way up the ramp. On your right hand side is a lever, just sit tight until player 2 is in the right place. Okay, there's player 2, so we're still in the lift at this point in time. Cross over the bridge, you want to continue forward, and as you come down, you want to take a right. It's the only way you can go, but stay on this path and eventually you come to this point where you need to go up so go up the first flight of stairs and go up the second first ramp at the stop here just you want to stop player one needs to pull and hold down the lever because that is going to create a bridgeway up for player number two so once player two is in position hold the lever and then player two can scoot up once player two is back up we're going to follow player two for this point both players can go the same way so this is the player number two coming up the bridge but once that's been released you can both cross back over the gap that you just opened up uh, and have player one follow player two so go up and around and you want to continue across the bridge and eventually you're going to come to this section where there's like a quite a big tower both of you need to go all the way to the bottom Now player one is going to need to jump on this boat here and player two is going to sit tight by this wheel. When player one is on the boat, player two will crank the wheel and hold it until they can get off. Once you're at the top, player two needs to jump out. So player one needs to jump out, not player two. Make your way up the stairs and then continue down and you're going to find this crane-like system. The crane is going to allow you to move a plank from left to right. So player one needs to hop in and twitch on it like I do. Uh, put the clue away because it's not particularly helpful. But shift the lever to the left and that's going to create a bridge for player number two. Don't move just yet because you're going to need to continue to help player number two. Player number two needs to go up to the ledge that has come down. So they've got one flight of stairs and it's going to be on the left hand side. They need to stand on this one and player one needs to move the lever to the right and that is going to take player number two all the way around. Okay, so once the player is off, so player two is off, they're going to go across this middle section. This middle section rotates by the way, so make your way across and over to the top. And now we're going to flip back to player number one. They need to get out of the crane and they need to go up the stairs that are behind the crane. Take a left one at the top and cross over this kind of wooden bridge. You'll notice you'll be cordoned off by a gate at this point in time. Now for player one to get across, player two is going to need to do some work with the little mechanism here that's going to rotate that centerpiece. And they need to flick that a couple of times. So they need to turn it, I believe, it's a total of three times. 
so eventually that the player one ends up with the stairs that go down and turn off at a right angle. So switching back to player number one, they'll go down and once they reach the bottom they'll take a left and then immediately on the right is a lever that is attached to a gate next to player number two. Player one needs to hold down that lever until player number two has gone through the gate to the other side. Now that player two has gone through the gate, player one actually needs to do a spot of backtracking. So go out of here and you want to go up and you're going to want to take a right at the top and you want to stay put. And now player number two is going to rotate the centerpiece. A little bit of overlap on the clips here, apologies, but this is me going back up to the top. Uh, so player two now needs to turn the centerpiece and they need to turn it so that the ledge that goes straight down is in front of player number one. I believe that is another three turns. Once it's in place, player number one will need to go down to the very bottom. So now that's over, I will continue forward. Once at the bottom, you just need to sit tight because player number two is going to have to do some more changes. And player two is going to rotate the ledge again so that the right angle ledge is in front of player number one. That's going to allow them to get up to the higher access area. This is a total, I believe, of two rotations. So player two will now be able to walk forward and they'll take a right and go up. Once they've gone up, you want to continue up the pathway to the top. And you want to take a left next to this house just here and you want to wait by this wheel because it's going to winch player two up in a lift. Now player two needs to get to the other side also so they need to rotate the ramp so that they get the straight ledge and it's going to send them down underneath player one. As they come down take a left and then go right up the stairs and into the lift just here. And then we're going to wait on player one to pull player two up. So. Player one is now winching up player number two. And now it's worth noting this is a point of separation where you both go get different achievements. So the split happens here in this chapter. So we've got to fix this light in front of us, like I said. However, it comes to adjusting the counterweights. Now there's a counterweight straight ahead of us. So I'm going to send player one to the left and player two is going to go to the right. But both when you pull on the counterweight, it's going to take you through a different path. So player one goes over this way. Player 2 goes to the other counterweight and you'll see the differences that I mean in a moment. When you get to your appropriate counterweight you need to press the interact button. You can see player 2 on the other side waiting to go and that is going to fix the light and give you what you need to do to solve the puzzle down at the end of the way. You'll both get the same achievement at this point which is the incandescent achievement because you fixed the light and stopped it from swimming, swinging. Uh, but now we need to push forward to solving the actual shadow puzzle on the very end. So as player one continuing up, and most of the work falls to player two in this scenario, you want to continue up to the very top and you're going to find a zip line. Once you find that zip line, you're going to want to go down to the very bottom, which is where we were just earlier. However, player one is going to be above player number two. So the zip line. And once you're in, I'm going to explain how this puzzle works. So the idea behind this puzzle is to project a giant picture of an owl through that magnifying glass on the end onto the door that you see behind us. This is the picture that we need to recreate and that needs to appear on the door just over here. And we do that through creating shadows. That is going to be made by player two. Now, as you come down into this area, you're going to see these lots of little handles around the place that are going to be used to redirect light and reflect it or used to store a lens that creates a shadow. As you can see directly underneath you, there is a beam going down. Now player two is going to need to go into the room just down here where you see me jump up. They're going to gather a bunch of mirrors and they're going to gather a bunch of stained pieces of glass to create those shadows. So flitting back to player two, who's just pulled their counterweight also, they're going to make their way up to their own zip wire and they're going to be directly beneath player number one.
So the goal of player number two here is to place the mirrors and the stained glass into the right places. So as they come into this section, you will see a wall of this stuff. So let's start off by grabbing the mirrors that are on the right hand wall first of all and come back for the glass later. Player is going to need to make their way out and you want to walk straight forward to the first full row of three. You want to place one mirror on each point. And then from that last mirror, walk forward, ignore the next post and place it into the one just by the ice wall. Look to your left and go to the far end opposite and place one in here. And then from there, walk forward and to the right once and place another mirror in this location. Now we're going to need player number one to redirect the light beam again, just so that it bounces around the area. Be warned, player two can actually block the light beam. So we want to start off by walking forward to where the light beam is first blocked. And we're going to rotate it so that it points over to the left. So follow me to where I reflect the light. So keep rotating this until it's in the right place. Now these bits can be a little bit of a pain from time to time. Um, <clears throat> the hitbox seems to be quite small for a particular side and it may rotate it back. Hopefully they'll adjust that later for ease of use. But spin it around so the beam points over to the left. Okay, so once that light beam is in place, you want to follow it to the end until you can't actually see any further reflection. It's going to take you all the way back to this one next to the giant lens. <clears throat> and you want to bounce the, le the, the beam so that it goes over to the left-hand side mirror. As again, as you can see, I have a spot of bother trying to get it to rotate. I don't know what is causing the issue, but it should be reflecting to the left. Eventually, it will cooperate. I'm not sure why. Then continue following the beam which has been set up already. Uh, so we don't need to change anything as it stands. When you follow it across to the left over this far side, uh, I've been lucky enough it's already reflecting over to the right. But you need to make your way down to the furthest corner and we're gonna spin it back into the first mirror. So rotate it and that's gonna point the light directly into here. That's gonna give player two enough space to hang up all of their pictures for the stained glass puzzle. Okay, so next up we're going to be as player two and let's say all of the images are now lined up. <coughs> Sorry, mirrors. Player two needs to go and grab the pictures off of the wall and we need to make sure we put the right picture in the right place and also rotate it. So these are going to cast the shadow that allow us to get the owl shadow on the back wall. So once you've picked all of those up, we're going to start making our way outside and placing them into the appropriate places. Starting off with the knight reading the book, we're going to go straight away to the only freestanding pillar right at the very beginning. We're just going to pop that one there directly in front of the beam. So you see this is now going to project a picture onto the door for player one, but this is in the wrong position, so we need to rotate this around 180 degrees. So once you've done turning that all the way around, you just want to have a quick look up to the window uh, as you can see I'm having a bit of a problem but look at the door and just make sure that is in the right position now we're gonna flip back to player 2 and as player 2 we are gonna go place another one of these mirrors into position so we are gonna need to make our way forward we're going to go to the left and we're going to place one on here and we're going to paste the one that looks like a picture of the hills and the tower with a tree. Now it's worth saying, player two, take out your torch at this point in time because it would make it easier to find out where you placed the, uh, the lens. And we also need to rotate this lens as 180 for player number one. Okay, so once that's in, Player number two is going to need to place their next lens. So we are going to go for forward a little bit from this particular section. And we are going to place the lens where the lady has something suspicious in her eye. Walk forward and we're just going to place it by the mirror. Pop that one in. And this will also need to be rotated by player number one. So again, player two, take out your torch so it's easier to see you. Uh, and then player one spin this dial 180 degrees.
Okay, and then as player number two, you want to grab the one that looks like mountains with uh, a moon in the middle, or like a pair of Batman wings. Place that to the left of the one that you just placed recently. And then we're going to turn around from this one in particular, and we're going to go a little bit further into the back. We want to take the guy who's got the cauldron piece thing looking going on, and we're going to make our way to the far left-hand side, a little bit further to the back. We want to put that one up. Now we're going to need player number one to rotate that one, so whip out your torch again, and that's just going to allow them to find out where you are. So they'll look down where you're stood, and you see the beam gets blocked off in this scenario. We need to rotate this so it is facing the other way. So as you can see, the picture is still not correct. The key head is on the other side. So we need to rotate this around 180 degrees. Okay. So there's a little bit more work to be done. So we've got one more lens to place up and we've got two more rotations to go for player number one. So as player number two, we want to grab the knight and we're going to put it into the left of the one that we just popped in last. Whip out the torch so we can see. And then player one will need to identify where player number two is. You can also see that the beam goes off uh, and it's been blocked by this one. So we're going to need to rotate this also another 180 degrees so it's lined back up. Now you'll notice that our image is not quite perfect yet because that's we actually missed one as we're doing this. Uh, so, but just to show you the one that we missed, it is on the left hand side and it's the one that is the mountains piece. So have player two stand next to the one that is like the mountains and the moon. So we have to rotate that one around 180 and it's just over in the back left corner here. So spin this 180 degrees. Once you've done that, you'll both get separate achievements for getting this clear. So spin that around. And once it's done, you'll both bag yourself an achievement and the door below will open. So once you've both got your achievements, you're going to need to make your way in through the doors. There's one down below for player number two. And if you go up into the rafters, player number one has a pathway down. You'll both need to rotate the switch and grab the astrolabe from the middle thing, similar to what you did with the grave earlier. Once that's done and Brennan is done flitting about on top of the astrolabe and he picks it up, uh, you'll need to carry it over to the boat and you're going to place it into the back of the boat and that's going to set you sailing back to the main area. You have a notice as well, the player that's carrying the astrolabe must have a serious elbow to hold something that heavy as well as actually keep their walkie-talkie out at the same time. Anyway, I will regroup with you back in the town.
Okay, so now we're back in the town. We're going to need to move the astrolabe up into the chapel like we did last time. So player two is grabbing it this time around, just showing us how buff he really, really is. As you come out, you want to take a right and you're going to go over to the lift. The astrolabe needs to go on the recess on the left hand side and both players need to pull the lever to ride it to the top. It's worth noting you'll need to pull this lever twice because there's actually a cutscene as well in the middle that will stop you. Uh, but once the cutscene's over, pull it again. Once you're over, you want to grab the astrolabe up and you want to make your way over to the chapel door. Once you're at the chapel door, you want to open this one and go inside. Uh, and then, like last time, you want to place the astrolabe back into the machine and you'll both unlock the same achievement at the same time. Okay, so now that is done, we are moving over into chapter number five. We're going to the Nautilus, which is probably the hardest level in the game. So we need to exit back out of the chapel and go down into the town center one more time. Okay, so to get to the north this you want to take a right after getting off the lift and you're going to make our way forward to this minecart over here. Once you get in, you're both going to unlock the same achievement when you get to the other side uh, and it's a little ride across over the thing. But both hop in and it will kickstart the little roller coaster for you.
Now, so it's worth noting this section has probably the toughest puzzles in the game. Uh, they're not too bad, but be warned that this first one is going to probably end up with somebody passing out quite a few times if mistakes are made. So we want to make our way over to this part here and player two is going to volunteer as tribute. There is a dead explorer on front of us that has a helmet on and the actual what's well a diver's helmet so you can probably figure out where this is going. Uh, we need to go underwater to get our next collectible. So swapping places with player two, they're going to pick this up and the bit that you actually need to pay attention to is the oxygen that sits in the bottom right hand corner. Now we're above ground so that doesn't matter at the moment uh, but the diver's mask is going to help you breathe. I mean, technically if it's not connected to anything and you're so far down, the pressure would pull you into the helmet. But once that helmet is on, you're going to see in the bottom right hand corner a warning around, you know, the how much oxygen you've got left. It also slightly obscures your vision, but it allows you to go into the water. So player two is going to walk forward and they're going to go across these bridges just ahead of us. You can run whilst you've got this on, but you can't run underwater in the same way. You can still move pretty quick, but not that quick. And once you get to the end, there's going to be a door on your right hand side. Player two is going to need to go in here. And we are going to need to move quick as both players to make sure that you can survive. The good thing is if you open a door whilst you're down there, which is related to progression uh, and not related to the oxygen, then that door will stay permanently open. So player two has now gone into the machine. Player one it needs to go up and they need to pull the handle and that is going to send player number two down into the bottom of the ocean. And it's going to open the door on the right. Player one is going to need to run down to the bottom and they're going to want to sit tight just over on this particular piece. So keep going down. Take a left. And you'll come to these gates here and you just need to pause for a second whilst player two comes into the water. So as player two, once you're able to exit and you are fully submerged in the water, you'll be able to start walking forward and the doors will open up and you can go out into the sea and start having fun with this. But you need to keep an eye on your oxygen meter on the side because if you run out of oxygen, you will pass out and you will have to do some bits again but as long as the doors that you've kept open are good and as long as the door is not linked to oxygen, you're also good. So start this off by walking out the door and then straight in front of you, you're going to see a lever just here. You need to rotate this one to open up the gate on your left and it's also going to open up the gates for player number one. You then need to take a look to your left and you're going to make your way forward and you're going to open this door but be warned it is going to cost you one bar of oxygen to open this door. From this point forwards, you now need to walk on. You'll want to take a right and you want to go down. So those oxygen bubbles you see, you can also use from those pipes to keep yourself alive if they're bubbling. At that stage, you want to take a left and we're going to keep walking forward. We want to take a right, not following the main path, a left, and a left at the pipe just here and then take a right keep going straight forward and eventually we're going to find a gate which is sorry a lever which is going to open a gate for player number one keep following this around and you'll want to spin this jellyfish lever once you've spun that that's going to open a gate we've already done it in this clip previous clip sorry uh, where we made a mistake, but that's going to open up a room for player number one. From that jellyfish lever, you want to backtrack a little bit and you want to take a left and then you want to take a right and right again. And you want to continue down and you're going to take a left. Keep going straight. And eventually you're going to come to the anchor lever, which you're also going to need to rotate this one here because it's going to open up a way for player number one. Turn around from this location. You'll then want to walk forward. You can then take a right and a left and then another left. 
and then a right at the bird. And then take a left to put you on the main track. And as you're coming round and through to this area, you want to take a right. You can eventually see this pipe with a marking above it. Now this pipe is not going to be turned on initially and we need to turn it on to open the door. This is where player one comes into effect. So now that the gates have been opened up, player one is going to need to organize some pipes. Okay, from this section, you want to make your way in and we're going to turn this pipe at the bottom, right? So we've got to redirect the airflow across to the other side. So we're going to get it into the pipe that is on our right hand side, just here. We're going to make our way across to the back room and we're going to go over here and we're going to rotate the pipe that is on the wall, the T-junction, and we're going to just rotate it the once so that it's going to steer the flow across. And then you're going to need to rotate this right angle pipe so it points upwards. Follow the pipe along the ceiling and eventually you're going to come into this side room just here. Rotate the right angle pipe and that is going to light up the teeth shaped little icon here. This means that player two can now breathe the bubbles from the pipe, refilling their oxygen, but it also allows them to open the door on the right hand side. So once that door is open, it's worth just re-topping back up on oxygen just before you go through. And it's actually to your right, this pipe here, so you'll be able to drop down. But what actually happened there is Brennan opened up a shortcut just to allow quicker access should he pass out later and have to come back to this section. When you're at the bottom, you'll want to take a right and then continue forward. Take a right at the signpost just here. Take a left. Continue staying on the right hand side. You want to continue straight forward and you're going to see that scary face thing. That's the next one that player two will need to line up but they can't do it just yet. So take a left at the scary face and you want to go down into this kind of room area and you want to spin the wheel for the steering wheel room to open up for player number one. You can start backtracking at this point if you'd like, but this is where now player two needs to kick in to gear. So player one will have, sorry, player two would have opened the gate over here and that's going to allow you to go upstairs. You want to make your way up to the top and you're going to need to adjust the pipes at the top to connect this one. You will know when you've done it correctly because the picture will glow yellow. And whilst you're up here, you might as well flip this pipe on the side just so that you don't have to go back down and do it again later. But now it's going to switch back to player number two. They're going to keep going to the right. They'll take a left immediately and the door ahead is now going to be open. They'll continue through that one and they'll take a right following the arrows and the guidance of the game. Keep moving forward. As you continue on the way around, eventually you're going to come up onto the section as the door is to your left. Uh, Brennan missed it by accident, I don't think you realised, but you want to drop further down into the hole. The bottom, the bubbles are going to be going, so you want to breathe in the gas. Uh, and that's going to give you some time, but it's also going to allow player number one to do some handiwork. So we're back at the top of the thing and we want to drop down. We're going to need to set up the airflow to this arrow without the tip. So rotate the pipe just here on the wall. And then you're going to trace that back from that one. It's going to go over the top of the wall just here. So we need to rotate the middle pipe. We'll go around and then we're going to need to rotate the T-junction on this side one more time. And that is going to connect the airflow to the little arrow missing its pointer. This means then player number two can continue forward. So they can come down into this area. They'll drop down. They'll take a left. 
Now we had a couple of weird bugs at this stage where sometimes this puzzle didn't work correctly. So, but it worked on the second time through. So there's the clue for the uh, player number one is the chain, the the arrow without the uh, the pointer. The door's already open on this end, so player two just needs to continue on through. They need to take a right, and they're going to keep walking forward. Take a right there and right again. Keep following it around, and we need to make sure that the teeth pipe is turned on. In our case, it's already set up so that we don't need to change anything, which means the door ahead can be opened. Continue following the pipes through the underwater tunnel. And when you hit this stage just here, take a left and the door is already open. You might have to open it yourself, it doesn't matter. Continue through and then you want to take a right and not a left at this opportunity. And it's going to give you the next clue that player one needs to open the door that is ahead. And we need to create a connection to the two diamonds. Okay, so to get the air flowing to this one, we're going to need to go back to the pipe in the floor. And we're going to spin that 180 degrees so that it's pointing the pipe in the other direction. Make your way over to the pipe on the wall just here. Point that up. Go into the room and you want to steer the pipe and point it to the left and that is going to set up the grass flow to the two diamonds which means that player number two can keep pushing forward so they'll turn around and they'll go back and they'll keep following the arrows until the very end they'll reach a door which will exit them out and put them back into normal oxygen taking all the pressure off of player number two now put down the helmet and once that's down player number two is going to be able to exit out and they're going to go forward and they're going to bag themselves an achievement at the same time called aquatic claustrophobic so navigating the water filled mines make your way down into this very big globe at the bottom you're going to need to wait on player one to bring you up to the surface so stay put just here and that is called the nautilus for player one, they're also going to bag an achievement, which is called Breathtaker, which is different to what player two had. So remember, you need to swap positions when you come to picking up the helmet in the beginning. But from that last gas pipe, they'll be able to take a look to the left, and a new gate has now opened up, allowing them to go forward. So move through that gate, follow the pathway down, take a left, take a right, move forward into this area, and you're going to see that there is a very large kind of dome area cave throw the switch and that is gonna link the uh, ship up to the top player two is going to be inside that ship and they will surface out on the other side of this area So now that the Nautilus has been brought to the surface, we're going to have to do some repairs to it because the electricity is not functioning at this time. So make your way up the ladder, stairs, whatever, as you're doing this. Uh, and you're going to come across this kind of area where we're going to need to take the charges from the batteries. So I need a charge from an orange battery. The other side will need the charge from the blue battery. These panels on the wall are associated to player two side. And then as you come down here, you'll see that there are pipes and these pipes will allow you to feed power from player one side across to player two side. So as player two, now that you've been brought to the surface, you'll be able to exit out, make your way up to the other side. Now it's worth noting here the pipes that are using to distribute the power are shared between both players. So be nice and share. Make your way to the very top and you'll see it's the same case over here. We've got a charged orange battery but a need for a charge of a blue one. And then we've got the pipe system just over here. So as mentioned earlier, the pipes are distributed between the two players so that you need to make sure that you're sharing them effectively, otherwise this is not going to work. Since we're on player 2's side, we're going to start with player 2. 
So player two is going to walk forward and we're going to request a pipe. So we're going to go for a B. They need to take out then pipe B and put it into their hand and make their way over to their panel. We're going to connect the blue power exit to the bottom corner. Now the pipes will only behave the same way as it tells them on the screen. Grab a D pipe and you'll want to take that over and you want to plug that in from the orange to the corner just here diagonally like so. Player 1 will need to grab a B pipe and they will also need to grab a D pipe. It's worth noting you can actually carry the more than one pipe at a time. So grab that D pipe, make your way up. You'll see the power now coming through from the side for the orange. You'll want to place the B pipe on top of the blue connection from going diagonally. And then you want to place the power pipe that you've got from the orange marker to the other orange marker. That's going to shut the gate and it's going to open up the second section and restock the pipe system. So switching back to player two, we're going to take on probably the slightly same puzzle again, but a bit more extravagant this time. So as you can see, we have the blue power, which we need to give back to player one, and we have the orange power that we need to transition back. So grab an A pipe. The A pipe then needs to be connected in the top left hand corner. Grab a, another A pipe and you'll want to place that one between the orange panel and the, sh the hole next to it. You'll then grab another A pipe and you're going to want to place that one on the board but between the blue and the shape above it. You'll then want to grab a D pipe and then you'll want to place the D pipe from the only two remaining spaces left. Switching back over to player number one who's still by their first puzzle. Once you are down by your first puzzle, sorry, the pipe system, not the first puzzle, you'll want to extract a few pipes so we want to get a D out. Once you have the D, you'll then want to extract a B. You'll also want to extract another B pipe. And then also extract the last A pipe. Okay, and then from there, you'll want to turn around and you'll want to interact with our panel. We're going to start off with the D pipe. And that's going to go from the orange connector to the very lowest connector on the left hand side. We'll then take our B pipe and collect it from the blue panel to the pipe that is the point that is diagonally above it. For some reason, I had a bit of a problem with this one. We'll then take our a panel and connect it to the two pieces that are left in the middle and then our final B piece will go from the blue point exit uh, and the blue point power that's going to solve the second section of this puzzle okay and then from that point you want to turn it around and this is our next wave and this is player two we're going to need to fill this board in here. We actually have to split the power this time around, so we're going to get a new shape as part of this. You'll want to grab a B out of the machine. You'll then need to place the B pipe between the blue exit and the one in the top right hand corner. Coming back to the machine, you'll want to grab a C pipe. You then need to place the C pipe between the orange exit and the point on the right of it. Grab another C pipe and you'll want to place that C pipe on the top to the bottom right hand side onto the orange exit. Grab a E pipe which is going to help us to split the power between the two different sides because we have two different exit points now and place that smack bang in the middle, connecting all the last three dots together. 
Switching back over to player one, turn around and we're going to grab out some pipes from this one. So we want to grab the two C pipes. Now that you have those, you'll want to push for a B pipe. It's the only one left. Once you have your B pipe, we want to take out an E pipe. And then we're going to make our way down to the puzzle. So from here, we're going to do a little bit of wiring. So we're going to kick this off with the E pipe and we're going to connect it to the orange exit and the points below it. Take the longer C pipe and connect it from blue to the white panel on the right and then place the C pipe underneath it also. And then using your B pipe, create a diagonal connection to the remaining hole on connecting the battery together with the blue energy. That is going to pop you the achievement called connecting the dots. And both players will get the same achievement at the same time. This is going to turn on this machine ahead of you, the one that we winched Brennan back out of the water on. And we're going to go ahead down into the machine and we both need to pull the lever that's inside the machine on the right hand side. Now be ready, there is another achievement at this point in time where you split up to solve the puzzle. So both players need to hold down these levers, levers to trigger this next section to happen. So it's worth noting, it's going to take a little while to get to the bottom of where we need to be for the next set of puzzles come in. So I'm going to cut the section short, uh, but both players need to throw the lever. And as a heads up, there is an achievement now in the next puzzle for doing a different part of the task. So you will need to come back to this area later and replay this point. Okay, so after a short while, we're going to come under attack from a Kraken and player one is going to go into the seat and player two is going to be providing the translations of what the Kraken is saying. So as you go into this section, you're going to move forward into this little machine just here and you're going to have a series of buttons in front of you. But first of all, the Kraken is going to introduce itself and it's going to talk to you. So the two things that you need to be relaying back to player one is one, what does the pupil look like on the shape of its eye? And the second piece is what sound does it actually make? So you'll notice at this point in time, when it talks to you, the pupil is gonna change and it's gonna make a particular sound at the same time. So for us to be able to communicate with the Kraken, on the left-hand side, we're able to replicate its pupil, but the appropriate response to the pupil and then on the right hand side we have the buttons that are making the sound so the sound that he makes on the right hand side is over here we have to answer the questions that he's asking if you need to listen to the question again that he asks you click the button and he'll repeat it so you'll see that his pupil changes and he makes the sound again for you now how to solve this on player two side they're going to get a, st a station for translating so they're going to translate the questions that are coming across from the Kraken and tell player one how to solve these. Now, thankfully, this is not randomized. So, so to help with that, there is a book on the table on the left. And you'll notice that in the book, the pupil symbol appears on the right hand side. And then the symbol on the left hand side is the sound. So in this situation, this is actually what happened, is the Kraken said to player one, greetings. So you'll see in here that there is a greeting sign which has the bottom left hand corner, which represents the sound and also based on the pupil, his piece. So now we need to respond with the appropriate response to his questions. So we need to say hello. So hello is somewhere in this book. We need to identify the shape and we also need to identify the appropriate sound to make that happen. So that's what player two is going to feed back. This piece in the middle here is the part that actually makes the particular sounds. So we've established that we know we need to say hello back to the Kraken. So we need to find out what the shape is in particular and player two needs to feed that back to player one. It's not simple, but in this case, the actual answer to the question is the little church symbol in the bottom left-hand corner here, 
when you click on these buttons and interact with it it makes a appropriate sound that has to go back to the Kraken so when you pull these you'll hear the noises that you have to replicate back thankfully the answer is the same every single time so that you're not going to need to figure this piece out we can just show you or you can try it yourself if you would like so player one now needs to respond back to the Kraken by saying hello and to say hello to the Kraken we are going to need to put in some symbols so we're going to start off by putting in the eye shaped image and the church symbol so directly to your left you'll see the eye shaped image out of these buttons here you'll want to click in the diet well it's more of a diamond uh, but you'll want to click that in and then <clears throat> that's going to put up a pupil in front of him that he's going to recognize and then we also need to feed him the sound also so we click on the church looking like thing and then we click on the diamond and that is us saying greetings back to him so when you pull the lever and transmit it that is going to go across to him and say hey what's going down be warned if you get this wrong three times he will break the ship and it is over and you'll have to redo the puzzle so he's now going to say three things to you he's going to say who be you he wants to know who you are and the natural response to that is to tell him we are explorers so we need to click the mustache little looking symbol on the left hand side and then we are going to find the little triangle image in the bottom right hand corner and once we've got those selected you want to trans that across to him and he's going to say to you king be hurt as a response to that one okay and our response to his question or statement is yes I mean what else are we gonna say back to that we can't really help him so pick the eye shape symbol on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we're gonna be looking for the infinity symbol with a line through the middle and then give that a pull and that's gonna transmit over to him now he's going to ask us the question what explorers desire so and we need to respond back to that with the answer escape and to do that we need to pick the dash symbol for the pupil and then the curvy M symbol on the right hand side at the bottom once that's done give the lever a quick pull and that is going to finish this puzzle you're going to get the achievement for monster bargaining, for communicating with the Kraken, and the player two is going to get the achievement for providing the translations required for the Kraken. Actually, you'll need to replay this chapter and swap roles if you're going for the full thousand gamer score or the platinum trophy. Now for the player two, that's going to pack away the translation machine and you're going to get the diplomatic entity achievement. And then from here, you're going to need to pull the levers on the sides again to restart the machine. And that's going to take you further down even more to the next and the probably the hardest puzzle in the game. I will regroup with you in a moment when you reach the bottom. So I'm going to cut this short so that you don't have to endure the journey down to the bottom as well. You're going to have to see it twice, once on your screen and once on my screen. And 
just to give you a heads up, like I said, this is the hardest puzzle in the game. You have an eight minute timer, roughly, to beat this. You will fail and you probably have to repeat it multiple times, but don't worry. It's not going to cause you any major problems. Off the bat, this is the first clue to make the astrolabe. We need to make three blue crystals, two red potions, and one green one. Now, this is a lot of timing and coordination between you and your partner, so these videos are going to potentially overlap. So directly ahead of you, you can see that big machine. We need to inject all of those potions and stuff into that particular piece. But potions are made up of components. So on my right-hand side, I have an acorn creating machine and a place where I need to put a green fuel a crystal creating machine and then as you go up the right hand side you'll have a chopping or a saw blade type of machine that requires the red a red fuel for chopping mushrooms and sticks and then you've got your potion creation machine for creating the green and the red potion which also needs the blue and the red fuel so that's going to feed that in once your potion gets rolling up and you've got the base ingredients in you enter in and it's going to transition that over into the big machine now on this river here which is flowing anti-clockwise you're going to see a whole series of bowls that you're going to need to pick up ingredients and these colored liquids in these bowls on the end are the different fuels you'll need to make things happen and then the solution to create each thing is posted up on the side here so to make a blue crystal we need to combine it pink crystal and a blue mushroom together to get the blue crystal we have to do that three times and that's done on player two side to make the green potion we need to take a purple crystal crush that take a blue mushroom chop it create a glass bottle and then feed that into the machine on the right and there's the red potion too but you can't see it very well what I will flag is that the blue crystal is the fastest item to create and the green potion and the red potion are kind of comparable now player two's side is also completely different but you'll need to focus on a couple of things at the same time as you're doing this you cannot do it sequentially so it doesn't work very well with the video but I'll do my best to explain everything that's going on and then you'll also need to make a red potion which is a crushed acorn a chopped root and a bottle also so we have to make two red three blue uh, and one green. So now I'm going to flip this over to the player number two side so you can see what's going on over there. But we need to pull this switch before we can actually start. Okay, and then for player two side, and like I said, I've just emphasized communication is key because between the two different sides of the the river you're going to be sharing a lot of things that each other need so try to share what you can and communicate with each other what you need very quickly the way we do this is we start by creating the blue crystals crushing the acorns and getting the necessary together for the green potion to start with so same clue is on player two side about the number of things that you need as you come down on the right they've got a recycling machine if you've over made stuff on the left you've got a root creating machine a bottle creating machine that requires the green oil to work and then you have a crushing machine that requires the red and the yellow oil so if you want to crush an acorn it needs to go in there and at the top you've got then the blue crystal creation machine and to the left of that you have the mushrooms and then it also requires fuel for this one to work I will flag now the acorns take an incredibly long time to crush and the potions take an incredibly long time to brew. Same concept though, player 2 is going to be using the stuff that is in the river. I recommend that you both keep one empty bowl on you at each times and if you've got too many empty bowls make sure you put it back in the river so that you can share it with the other player. Don't hog them. This is a tricky project that is going to be fun but you're going to solve it and just so you can see it a little bit better the red potion ingredients is one crushed acorn one root that has been chopped up and one glass bottle player one can create the potions player two can grind the things and create the crystals so there's a lot of heavy work coming to player two at the start of this and you have to do it in a timely manner so make sure you're communicating and consistently moving as you're doing this so enough rambling maybe a bit more doing so both players will need to pull this lever to get it to start and I'm going to show you how you kickstart this 
Now, the important piece here is actually to wait for the bowls to pass player one and player two because player one is going to grab a lot of the raw ingredients that player two is going to need in the beginning. Straight off the bat, we are going to go after two acorns and four pink crystals, and we're going to try and grab the blue oil at the same time. So, as that comes around, let player two say that it's coming. Player one is then going to need to do a full 180. You also have to enjoy this little cutscene where it shows you that you've got a timer. Thanks for letting us know. And then player one wants to grab all of the empty bowls in the beginning which goes against what I just said, but it doesn't matter. Uh, grab all the bowls. You'll want to pick up the blue oil. And you'll want to pick up the green oil. The green oil, we're going to get it out of the way now because player two needs it more than player one does. So then player two is going to need to pick up the red oil and the yellow oil. Player one does not need the yellow oil, so it can be placed straight into the machine over the right by the grinder. And player two can also grab a mushroom automatically by placing a bowl in the machine, taking that down to the river and then popping it in on the far side. Pop it in the furthest distance away because that is the quickest way of doing it. And player two is player one at this time is going to be sweeping up the raw ingredients. So player one, make your way over, put the green sauce into the acorn machine and put in an empty bowl to get an acorn. Spin around and you want to grab a pink crystal from the machine there. Take the green sauce out and put it back into the top, so the green fuel. And then you'll want to grab out the acorn from this one and put in another bowl to get another acorn. And then take the green oil out again and then grab the acorn once it's available. And then spin around and then you want to grab the pink crystals out of the machine. Keep going until you've got four pink crystals. Okay, so we're going to load the river up, go to the farthest side, right, and we want to throw into the water. So the two acorns and all four crystals. And now accidentally at this point I put in the blue oil, but it doesn't matter too much. But place the green one in because player two is going to need that quite heavily. And then you'll want to wait as player one over towards this corner because uh, we need to grab the mushroom when it comes back around. Take that up and we want to pop it into the grinding machine at the top here and then make your way back down to the river. The blue sauce has come back around for me, so grab that one, uh, and then take that up. Player two does not actually require blue at any point at any time, so place it into the place by the potion machine. So head back down to the river and sit tight. Now, everything that you've put into the river at this point in time, apologies for the timing issue, will be coming over to player number two. They need to sweep up all of the stuff that is taking place here. So grab all of the crystals and the green oil. Turn around and you want to place the acorn inside the machine and that's going to get that grinding. Place a pink crystal at the top in the blue crystal making machine. Grab a mushroom and place that in with the pink crystal and that's going to set that underway. You'll want to put the green oil and then come back down. You want to grab the red oil from the grinder, sorry, the yellow oil from the grinder and place it next to the uh, blue crystal creating machine. Once the acorn is crushed, just throw it into the river. We won't need player two to pick it up or player one to pick it up yet. Just leave it there for the time being. Place a pink crystal in the crusher. Put the red oil back in the top. Make your way up and the yellow oil should now be available and drop that into the crushing machine that is gonna crush the pink crystal. Next up, we wanna grab the bowl and we wanna go up to the machine and we're gonna grab the green oil Head back down and go to the bottle creation machine and place the green oil in and the empty bowl and it's going to make that for you. Pick up the red and the yellow again and the crushed crystal and the bottle. And you'll want to place into the water the crushed crystal, the red oil and the bottle. So that's now going to come across to player two. And as it comes over, you want to grab the crystal. You want to grab the red oil. You can leave the acorn there for now, it doesn't matter. And the bottle. Go up to the potion creation machine. 
and we want to place the red oil in the machine next to us which is going to grind the mushroom up we picked up earlier drop in the pink crystal we're going to wait for the mushroom but put the bottle in as well at the same time any spare bowls make sure you put them back on the river so you don't screw over your friend that you're working with you want to grab the red oil out of the grinding machine and you want to grab the blue mushroom out of the grinding machine. Put the blue mushroom in on the left hand side and put the red oil, which didn't pick up for me for some reason, into the potion making machine. This is going to kickstart the first potion to be created. Now for some reason I was able to pick up the red oil before the lid closed. Pro, win. Uh, but you can actually pick it up a few seconds later. Drop that back into the water because that's going to be needed by player number two. Our grinding stuff is underway. Now, player number two is going to need to load up the acorn crusher again, but can also at the same time set forward another blue crystal creation. So he can load the machine up on this side. Uh, but he's going to need the oils that we've got down at the bottom. So he needs the green and the yellow oil once they become available. As you can see, we have a lot of twitchy feet going on in this because we have to wait around for certain things. And at this point, we actually run out of bowls, but it's okay. So now you have the red bowl coming through and the spare one. The red bowl needs to go into the grinding machine to get the acorn underway. And then the green oil needs to be taken up to the top. And we are now just waiting on the yellow oil to become available. Take the yellow and the red, place the yellow oil into the top. That's going to get the second crystal underway. Pick up the crushed acorn. And we want to get a root this time, so place that into the machine at the very end. Drop the root in the river for later. And we are now on player one's side. So we're now back at player one and the machine is just going to be done here. We're going to get gifted three bowls, place the acorn into the machine, ready for later. Throw two of the spare bowls back into the water so that you don't have them on you and that they're going to go over and help player number two because they're probably running low. You'll want to grab the root out of the river that player two sent around last time. Take that up and put it into the machine for grinding later. And then we're going to flip back to player two who is probably having the next crystal done and dusted so load up the pink crystal grab a blue mushroom and then set that underway that is the third blue crystal being created next up we're going to need to place the red oil back into the water uh, at the same time any other items so player one is going to now need to grab that red oil that player two is just placed in Take that up to the top and we're going to need to blend the weed at the top hand side. So throw that in and that's going to kickstart that process. Back as player two, we need them to create a bottle. And also grab the green and the yellow out for making that happen. Okay, so once the bottle is available, that needs to go into the river over to player number one as well as the other crushed acorn that is at hand here. And we're going to flip over to player number one, so that stuff is now coming around. We're going to grab the bottle out of the water, and then we're going to want to grab the crushed acorn as well. At the same time, throw a spare bowl in. Once you've done that, make your way up to the top. We're going to need to grab the crushed root out of the system just here. We want to grab the red oil at the same time we want to put the crushed root into the left the bottle into the right and then we want to put the oil in the top we've already got a crushed acorn in there waiting ready to go so that's going to kick start this process you're going to need to grab the red oil out of this again and you're going to want to take that over to your grinding machine like i said we get a bit shaky here because uh, we're still learning all of the things to do Put the red oil into the grinding machine and we're going to need to get another root off of player number two. So player number two can do that by just popping a bowl in. That's going to spit a root out. Drop that onto the river. We're also going to need a, another bottle as well at this point in time. So 
we will need player two to make their way over to the empty bottle machine put the green sauce in and cook one of those up grab the bottle grab the oil uh, and then place the bottle into the water player one is then going to need to grab that stuff that has just entered so it's another bottle and another root so grab the bottle take that up and if the machine is done it should go into the right hand side unfortunately we're a bit too eager grab the root from the river make your way up the right hand side and drop the root in the grinding machine uh, around about now we should see the first red potion finishing up you need to be creating that last red potion before the dial starts to hit red so load up your acorn move your blue oil to the top place your bottle in the machine take your red oil out of the system you want to take out your ground up root put the ground up root in the machine and put the red oil in the top that is going to kick start that last red potion just about in time so i apologize for how quick paced that was but hopefully that pattern will give you something to go on and study but effectively kickstart make the blue crystals first right but load up on the pink crystals to start the green potion but ensure that the acorns are being grounded because the acorns take some of the longest time to grind but then the potions actually take the most time to create overall the blue crystals are generally pretty quick so that all being done so once the time has run out the potions will fill up in the top of the machine You'll need to go back to the center area and both pull the same switches at the same time. So those switches are next to the instructional posters. Pull it down. That's going to cause all of the fluids to flow into whatever this is. Once that's done, that is then going to feed down into whatever that is. And it's going to create an astrolabe for us. So it takes a few seconds, it needs to press it. Once it's pressed, doesn't matter who, one of you will need to grab it out of the system. Whoever's got the strongest elbow probably will be the one to go for. So pick it up uh, and then you're going to need to make your way back to the central area. This is also going to bag you the achievement for Dome of Creation. You do not need to do this puzzle again, thankfully. I had to do it twice, but that's part of practicing to make these guys for you. Uh, but once you are done with this, that's it. It's done, dusted. You don't have to do it again. Now you need to make your way up to where the original dome was, but you won't go into it. You're just going to follow a tunnel. Uh, and when you follow this tunnel and you get into the chair, place your uh, astro lens into the thing. Both of you will need to sit down and it's going to take you back up to the surface. Okay, so once you're back at the top, you're going to want to grab the tool from here. Give it a quick pull and it's going to come out. Make your way out of the machine and we're going to go back into the chapel. So do that by taking a left. You notice it's getting dark and the sky is turning red. So be ready for things like cutscenes and some story. But both of you hop on the left and you want to pull the lever together. And we're going to go back up to the chapel.
once you've done that you want to take the astrolabe out and we're going to go into the chapel again and it's going to be the same time as before you're just going to need to pop the uh, golden wheel into the device that is ahead of you you also bag yourself an achievement at this point in time so make your way forward once the loading screen is over and pop that in and once you've popped that in you're going to bag yourself an achievement for putting the last astrolabe in and then there is a second achievement you're going to get shortly afterwards because that's going to open up a little uh, lever system that you can interact with so once that's in place you'll see it pop out just on your left hand side here both players will need to interact with this so it is just coming up now make your way over which side doesn't matter both players need to push it from the inside underneath the astrolabe and the moment we do this Brennan decides that he didn't want to play the game anymore uh, and yeah his game crashed so you still get the achievement uh, and he's still got the achievement as well despite being disconnected but that's gonna set us back a little bit so just recutting this now so at this point in time, once you've pulled these levers, that is going to kickstart into gear and you're both going to ride up to the top. You are actually technically now in chapter 6 and you're going to have a bit of a cutscene to watch over. deserved our respect such virtue the world had never seen our homes and hearths he would protect amidst lush fields of green until there came that fateful night when he exchanged the green for eternal white defying our fate four families took the lead meeting in secret, planning to undo our king's foul deed. Then, through magics of the long decayed, the astrolabe machine was made. Hoisted to sacred sight up high, we gathered upon the bell tower, blinding the king's gaze nearby, channeling the moon's ancient power. But salvation cannot come for all. The royal sisters, ever kind, shall compensate their father's fall. They will hide astrolay pieces three and stay behind, cursed for all eternity. Okay, so this is now your final showdown. 
Oh, there's no separate achievements in this particular section, but kicking off player two needs to go to the left and up to the top of the ladder. You're going to see a classic winch system like we've been using throughout the rest of the levels and stuff. This means then player one is going to need to get on the lift that is down on the lower level. Uh, so when you're at the top with the astrolabe, the top of the tower, that is just to your left with a bit of wood in the way. Hop on in and player one is going to get winched all the way to the top by player two. When you're at the top there is this lever here that player one needs to pull and that is going to redirect the beam and that's going to cause to blow the door off of the lift and cause it to obstruct something below. So you need to go back down uh, and you just need to drop down, you don't need to take the lift this time. You can fall, you're not going to die or take damage and you're going to see this piece of wood blocking the way. So make your way over to the wood, player 2 will also need to drop down. Um, they also do not take any additional damage for doing this, they are just on the ladder above this particular piece and you both will need to pull the piece of wood out of the way. So pull it down, that is going to then cause the beam to redirect to a different location. That different location is up in the rafters so we need to go around. Both players need to go in the same direction, up the ladder in the corner, just over here, this is opposite to the other ladder. Jump this gap, make your way up to the top, there is another ladder that needs climbing here. When you're at the top of this one, you want to take a left and you want to go out onto this rigging. Make your way around to the far side and the player two is going to just need to go opposite you. Now we're going to need to winch up one of the red crystals from down below. Once player 2 is up with you, you both just need to interact alternately in with the seesaw machine and just keep doing it until the little orb on your left hand side comes up in line with the laser beam. Okay, once that is over, you both need to make your way back down again. The same way you came up, you just need to go through the gaps. And just drop down. Both players need to go to the same place, so keep dropping all the way down. And you'll notice that the laser is now pointed to a machine where it's going to require you to pull both handles on both sides at the same time. Both player one and player two need to do this simultaneously. However, there's a bit of a catch with this one. When you pull the both handles down, that central cog is going to pop off and go flying away. So pull the levers, the catastrophe will strike. That's going to ping off. Doesn't matter who grabs it, player one or player two can, uh, but one of the players will need to pick it up. Take that over to the machine, it's absolutely hulking so it's quite difficult to see past. Once it's back in, both players need to pull on the handles again. Once that's done, that's going to retarget the beam to the other side, right over here. As you can see, that's missing and just going off into the distance, so it's not very helpful. Both players will need to go to the other side of the astrolabe for potentially one of the funniest moments in the game. So once that is redirected uh, and it's bouncing off of here, both players will need to go to the other side. Following player two, there's a little gap that's going to take you out onto a balcony and as you walk around what's going to happen lightning's going to strike and player two is going to fall down the gap that's not particularly funny but it's this bit here so you'll reach down to assist player number two but your resolution to the situation is just to put the plank on the side over just to fix it top-notch helpful grand thank you uh, and then both players need to continue around to the other side and then you both will need to interact with these levers simultaneously. Once that's done, we're going to need to separate, but this doesn't impact your trophies or achievements. But player two is going to need to make their way over to the winch that we used earlier. So we're going to need to go back up into our places. So hang tight here whilst player one gets in position. 
Player 1 will need to go from that switch machine around to the side. They'll need to take a left and then to the right there's going to be a lift which we used earlier. Once you're in that lift, have player 2 winch you to the top and we're going to go solve our next puzzle. This puzzle is completely random but I have the guiding solution not the actual answer. So the goal here is that you need to pull all of these three levers to move forward but they're in the right order at the right time. Player 2 is also going to have a set of levers. This is also on a timer. It's very quick but it's very doable. Down here is the sequence of the orders that you must pull your levers. So you can see that this rotates and it randomly changes every single time. But if one of your levers appears on the picture, then you need to pull it. And you've got to pull it in the order of what is happening. You can't pull one before the other or two at the same time. Player 2 will need to drop down from their ladder and start climbing back up to where the seesaw lever was. And once they are up there, take a left and stay on the left hand side and eventually you'll come across to the other half of this puzzle. It's the same concept, you just need to talk to each other. So if somebody else might need to pull a lever first, just tell them if it's their lever or your lever. So your levers respond to the pictures on the top and to the pictures on the right. Going from left to right, that is the current order. So that resets every few seconds or so. You've only got to pull six in very quick succession and they are quick levers. So just pull them. So player one at the top is now pulling their levers. It's now then communicating to say who goes next. We got this the first try. It's a very quick and easy puzzle, uh, but it will reset and it doesn't affect your game or slow you down if you fail it. So pull those levers in the sequence and you're gonna get the achievement for Exodus. Both of you will get that because it's now gonna restore power to the device below. And then both players are going to need to head down to the astrolabe machine that is in the center. So once that is all over, turn around, make your way and drop back down. And on the astrolabe there's going to be a series of levers that have now spawned in. So you've got two handles on the side and then to your right is a door with also two handles. Both players will need to pull down the handles on the astrolabe at the same time. That is going to cause it to kick in with a powerful beam of some form. So once you've done that, keep it held down, it's going to spin up fast, it's going to shoot that light at the wall. Then both players need to pull both switches at the same time, and that is going to trigger one of the final cutscenes in the game.
Okay, so now that it's over, we are gonna be at sea and we're gonna have a classic kind of Titanic moment. You know, Leonardo, DiCaprio and, and Kate Winslet situation. So both of you are gonna need to swim forward and eventually you, you are going to come across a platform with a light on. Now apologies for the cut here, I did have a bit of a bug in my situation. So keep both swimming forward until you reach that platform. Once you are at that platform, both players will need to get on board or try to. So only one of you can survive at this point in time. There's an achievement for surviving and there's an achievement for dying. So you guys figure that out how you want to do it. If you're going for the full completion, you can chat to select back to this point. But to move this forward, it's going to give you the option of asking for help and helping your friend the point here is is that if you want to survive don't follow through because they're going to push you into the water then you're going to retaliate uh, but the goal here is for both of you to uh, accept your fate one will survive one will die so that being said you'll need to go back and clean up on some of your achievements so by the way player two will come back up at this point he doesn't die just quite yet but um, you'll need to go back and chapter select to the different points in the game to rerun it. Uh, so there's a couple of achievements that you'll need to mop up on a kind of partial playthrough. Other than that, I've been Jastic here from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, be sure to drop us a like, comment, subscribe, and happy hunting.